Um, yeah, but match of Annapol with Jasper Philipsen. These two, Jasper Philipsen obviously trying to win to win his second monument. And then we have uh, Macho Van der Poel trying to be the first defending champion since uh, Fabian uh, Cancellara and first world champion since, um, since uh, what's his face? <laughs> Peter Sagan. Uh, should, should the chicane, should the chicane, will the chicane make Roubaix, will the chicane make the race safer and then you guys can let me know it just for context anyone that doesn't know before the true in Arnberg, what they've done is sort of you come into it uh, well you don't come into the Arnberg straight away you have to go around a, like a quite sharp bend and then that's supposed to kind of act as a speed reduction for the peloton and that was kind of the the gimmick or whatever you will i'll try and find the clip and then i'll put it on on here but uh without sound apologies for that i didn't realize the sound was off obs oh well but we're seeing the team cowboys here this might number 95 is that pitcock i think he was a late addition i didn't think he was actually going to do the this race but a lot of riders in the cars here number 95 that is tom pitcock but niels polo here struggling to get back into it uh yeah a bit of chaos behind here. Tom Pickock and uh, Pollard are almost back into this group. So two very strong cars. I mean, Pickock, a former winner of the under 23 uh, Paro Bay race. I know yeah, the Paro Bay as well, which is happening today as well. I'm not even sure if it's finished already, but that isn't a great correlation. It's not like with maybe the Tour de l'Avenir and the Tour de France where we've seen um, that the win uh, sometimes goes up, but uh, if any of you were interested, it was a 1-2 Slovenia finish today. So uh, Slovenia doing a good job there. Elbert Philips, Elbert Philipsen, the wonder kid from Denmark, he finished fourth. Axel van der Broek, is he related to Jürgen? No, he's not. Uh, one of the Belgian riders finishing third place. But, I mean, yeah, so the the it's looking good for the likes of uh, Slovenia, they the next generations coming through. It's not just Tad Gacha and uh, Primoz Roglic. Not like they they're in the same generation. But nevertheless, that aside, hundred and ten point three kilometers, two minutes and twenty six seconds between this first elite group with favorites, and then the second group, Alex Segard. We're seeing him coming up towards the front as well. Lots of destiny, an interesting team. Uh, I don't think they've got Arno Deli here. Obviously, Arno Deli is the golden goose that they always look towards. He's not here, so Alex Zegard could be interesting. Brent Van Moore. We haven't even gone through the teams yet, but I mean, many of you might have watched the preview show, but um, in there, we didn't have the full list of riders. So, some, uh, well, if we go through the first team, we've got Macho Van Poel, Silvan Dilia, Timo Klitsch. I have no idea who that is. Jasper Philipsen, uh, Edward Plankard, Oscar Aritabik, and Gianni Vilmesh, a very strong absent de Koenig team, as we saw in the Tour of Flanders. We also have Fred Wright up here. Fred Wright's up in the group. No Binyam Gamay for Intermarché Wanti. He elected to skip the race. I'm not quite sure. Maybe uh, Tour of Flanders just took it a bit out of him. Uh, team with Melissa Bike, obviously not here with Wout Van Aert. They still have a very strong team with Delaman Ball, former winner of the race. Edward Ofini, very strong engine, as we know. Per Strandhagenes, the young Norwegian. I think this is actually his officially his new pro season. Uh, wearing the number 13, it is his new pro season because last year he was riding for the development team. Christopher Laporte making a return as well. Top 10 last year. Julian Vermont, uh, who didn't actually have a contract at the start of the year. He's here. And the Van Dijkje twins as well. Uh, twins or brothers? Twins or brothers? Uh, 30, uh, 15th of March for one of them, 50, yeah, Van Dijk twins. And for Little Trek, Mas Pilsen's in the team. He's really sh targeting this race. He did say that he was using uh, Tora Flanders to kind of test his legs. And uh, Tim de Kirk, Dan Hula, Jonathan Milan, Edward Turns, Matthias Vacek, uh, Otto Wehrgarten. Not too many of the riders that we saw in the Tora Flanders. But um, certainly a strong team, and um, they could do something here. We're still we're in a bit of a lull now, so that's a good opportunity for us to just 
roll through the teams. Um, we've got Groupama FTJ, Stefan Kung, Louis Aski, uh, Sven Erik Bustrom, friend of the channel, the Norwegian. And we have Clement David, uh, Davy. We have Fabian uh, Lehard, Lawrence Pithy, who's been a very strong uh, performer this year already. Uh, Mark Soro as well. He's been around the blocks as well. We've got John Devenkop, who actually crashed on a recon as well, former winner himself. He was barged out of the way uh, last year, unfortunately, by Macho And uh, yeah, still finished top 10, so that was good and was kind of consoled by um, the two Benelux riders from Alperson at the end of the velodrome. Uh, Jacob Ayula, best car. Well, many people have been flagging up Max Walscheid. Um, Max Walscheid, the tall sprinter, 1 meter 99, has done this race five times in the past. Last year, he finished eighth, so that was actually his best result. So maybe. Uh, this year, he could do one bet or oh, get higher up. It's his first year with the team. And uh, Jacob Ayula obviously know a thing or two about winning this race with Matt Heyman. We haven't got that famous breakaway as we're so used to with Arambert or well, uh, Pyro Bay. But 7 kilometers away now, or 12.4 kilometers away from the Truen Arambert. 12.4 kilometers away from the Truen Arambert. So that is... Uh, that is where the big first suspense is coming. Uh, thank you, Paddy, as well, for the super chat and um, uh, tuning in as well. I mean, guys, let us know who you think is going to win. The chicane, 67% of you are saying it's not going to be uh, a win. And, um, oh, there's a new feature. You can like things now. But, yeah. We'll wait and see. Okay, what are we saying? Brian said, just saw Talon got disqualified for a bottle. Oh, strange. Okay, um, so we have had a disqualification with Josh Talon. Very unfortunate. He was, he was, he did very well last year. Um, his first uh, edition of the race, and then obviously seventeenth in the Tour of Flanders. But the Truen Arenberg is what we're coming up to, and I mean if. If none of you, if some of you haven't seen the new channel that we have, well, we, <laughs> uh, I say we, it's uh, very much, uh, well, it doesn't matter. But uh, in terms of that, uh, I actually went to the True in Arenberg. I'll link the video in the chat and then you can see it for yourself. Yeah, obviously just see the video because that would be nice. But, and subscribe to the new channel where it's more about in-person stuff, but also for yourself to kind of see the sheer, the ruggedness of these um, of these uh, absolute brutal cobble sectors, and uh, the yeah the Arenberg and we that's where this clip is from as well the one I forgot to mute. Uh, Macho Van der Poel was there. He turned up, saw the camera of uh, my partner, and then decided not to go on the easy side and came in on the hard side of the Arenberg just to show that he is the man. So um, that. Was, a very nice shot, but the interesting thing with this is that he was uh, shielded by two motorbikes, as you can see in the clip. But anyways, as we come to the Arnberg, it's going to be a very diluted field here. And I mean, it's quite fascinating how Alperson are riding this race now that they've elected to go for more of a uh, an all out, like just control the race from very far out and not uh, not really leave it down to too much of a chance. Last year was a great race, as we know. Uh, I mean, a bit unfortunate with Wout Van Aert puncturing. I mean, imagine Macho Van Der Poel and Wout coming to the velodrome together. That would just be another addition to their fantastic, fantastic, fantastic uh, rivalry that we've mesmerized over the number of years but 105.3 kilometers two minutes and 16 we got Alperson with three riders in front of Macho Van Poel, Lidl Trek in strong numbers as well Matthias Vacek are one of their riders for Lidl Trek and he is the national champion we've also got uh, Fred Wright up here this one and Lisa bike are very strong Bora have uh, one rider not sure who they're gonna uh, go for but a lot of a lot of destiny. You would love to see the pro continental team doing something here. Uh, Alex Segard kind of has the the build, the the attributes to do well in this race. Uh, we saw them as well. We didn't see UAE. UAE, I think, is a kind of an interesting card with Nils Pollitt. Nils Pollitt, I said it before, second place in uh, Paro Bay before when he in two thousand nineteen when he came to the velodrome with Philippe Gilbert, but just couldn't get the better of Phil. 
And then, obviously, last week, uh, he got a podium he wasn't expecting because of that very huge diversion that we saw by by Michael Matthews. But, yeah, uh, EF Education, Easy Post, what is their best card? We haven't really talked about them, so... Let's just ponder over their list as well. Obviously, at the previous show, I didn't have access to the full uh, list of riders, but yeah, um, we were saying EF Education is both. Oh, almost a crash here. Uh, one of the riders just clipping out here. That got a bit narrow there. Alberto Bettiol, Stefan Biesinger. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was one of the absent riders, actually, the first rider who just got caught out here by the sharp corner here. Uh, but nevertheless, EF Education Easy Post. Yeah, that was quite, yeah, ooh. He could have hit the wall there. That was quite bad. But uh, in terms of EF Education Easy Post, we have Alberto Betiol, who's never actually done this race. Stefan Bissinger, who you would think, ooh, it's number three. Oh, it's Timo Klik, Kielich. Um but uh, yeah, he's back on the bike and uh, just a bit of a wobble there, back on the bike. But EF Education East Post, I'll try again here. They're on another couple sector here. This is the Halu Valles. It's a four star sector and we've got Lidl Trek coming to the front now. So they've started to put the pressure on here. Mas I, th I think riding second wheel, I think I can see some rainbow bands. But uh, it's quite windy. We've got like a left hand, a side wind for the riders. And the group is starting to splinter a bit. Just ever so slightly a small few gaps coming out. And I tell you what, it's quite hard to pick out your own line here when you've got a lot of other riders. And I would, if I was a rider, I would prefer to not have anyone around me because it's so dreadful, the atro at atrocious, the conditions. But 106... 102 kilometers and we got Matthias Vacek here leading out his uh, captain on Mas Pilsen. Mas Pilsen just liking to have his own line here at the front. Just a few riders just disappearing off the front here. Four star sector is nothing to to kind of well it's a huge sector four star sector. They're coming out of it in 1.5 kilometers time and uh, corners coming here. Uno X have riders up here. I mean, Alexander Kristov, we talked about, we discussed it on the channel with him, that, um, yeah, it's quite strange that he's never really had a great result at this race. He's won Tour of Flanders, he's finished on the podium a few times, additionally to that, but he's never, this has been the one where you would have thought, hardy sprinter, knows how to do a hard race, and this could have been the race, but it isn't. He's never done well in this race, unfortunately. Alexander Kristoff, Uno X, one of these um, invitee teams. But we got number seven for Alperson. I think that might be Jasper. No, it's not. Johnny Vermeesh, obviously, on great duty marking uh, Mas Pilsen in the Tour of Flanders. And, uh, yeah, just the, it's just a formidable unit this year, I think. Number 195 going out the back here for Lotto. Uh, Destiny, a few riders splintering at the back, number five, Edward Plankard as well. A few riders just getting distanced by the pace here. They've got 600 meters left of this sector. We know that the big test is coming up as well. Great to have Stuart as well from Japan. I got up to watch the start of a Formula One Grand Prix in Japan. So uh, yeah, a bit tired because of it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it might be the same thing as today. You just see a Dutchman disappear off the front. But yeah, uh, Vacek is doing a great ride here, just policing the things in this sector with Mas Pilas in the second wheel. Machu is about seventh wheel down, but I mean, still 100 kilometers out. They've got two minutes and 22 seconds. I'm really impressed how they've built this up. In terms of the chicane, when we get over 100, we'll change it. And uh, 87 people have said that, well, out of the 87 who have voted, two thirds of you think that this chicane doesn't do any difference in terms of making a difference but that also means that one third of you think it might make it safer so who knows we, we could get a potential crash there um but uh yeah it's it's all still to play for i'm still perplexed why tarling was disqualified uh brian was saying it was a bottle i'll just try and investigate further uh has been dis okay josh tarling has been disqualified from paru bay after holding onto a bottle as he returned to the leading group 
Um, okay. And apparently to one website, he was touted as a dark horse for Paro Bay. Uh, I mean, you should never discount him. He's the European time trial champion. So, yeah. Uh, but great shame that. And yeah, Tom Pickock, this is actually his first race. So um, in terms of Paro Bay. And I can recognize the Arenberg now. And it was only a few days ago that I was there. And yeah, it was, uh, it, it's crazy. The, the cobbles, it's, you can't really describe it. The bouncing, the, the vibrations you feel through. I think I still have bruises from going on the, on the segment. But seeing the pro riders, if you're following uh, the Cycling Dane on Twitter, you'll have seen the, video I posted of a pro from Upsen de Koenig, not much of Vanderpool, one of his uh, domestiques just passing me like nothing. But uh, they, they're easing up a bit. The pace has just come out uh, or just gone down a bit. We still have a Q36.5 right in here, number four for them. Um, yeah, so Q36.5, obviously they want to try and get a good result here as well. That is uh, Kamil Mal Malik, the Polish rider. So good ride from him so far. I think they only have one rider in here. We got a, a, a DSM Fermanic rider. I would guess that that's uh, John Degenkolb, but uh, I will double check. I'll get back to you on that one. Lawrence Rex, obviously for Intermarché, is the big card, I think, after a top 10 finish last year. No Binium Gamay, unfortunately. He wasn't here last year either because of that crash in the Tour of Flanders. Not quite sure why he missed the race. Um... Maybe he just wasn't feeling it. The Amstel Gold isn't on his calendar either anymore. So, yeah, 59th in Parabain uh, or in the Tour of Flanders. Not really what he wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Uh, but just under the 100 kilometers to go, 98.5 kilometers and number five for well number five number five not number five for a team number five which i think is plankart is back in this group so that little a stretch out of the bunch there and we're coming towards the chicane now we're coming towards that chicane they've done it up a lot more than uh, they did it uh basically when i was there there was a lot of work happening and they've really blocked off the path so they have no option other than going straight for it two minutes and 31 seconds still for this group to the next group but this is going to be a savage sector are we going to see what we saw last year with the likes of Derek G where the bike was completely destroyed just like devoured by the the pavement by the pave but Miss Melissa bike it looks like they have three riders in this group Groupama have three as well Alperson have four uh, in terms of towards the front Macho Van Der it is John Degenkolb on the wheel of Macho Vanderpool, not probably not a wheel he wants to be on after what happened last year. But uh, EF, they have two riders. You've got one Intermarché rider in here as well. Actually, I'll just send you the screen. I'll put the screenshot on so we can all see. And if anyone can pick out riders better than me as well. But it's, uh, yeah. What I thought was interesting with the Arenberg actually going on it and you don't really see that either from the pictures, is that the Arenberg Forest is actually slightly downhill. So it's it's not, it's not a, it's, yeah, it's downhill. It's not uphill. So, uh, yeah, great to have uh, Dever, Deverci from uh, Costa Rica. San Jose, potentially. Uh, but yeah, uh, 97 kilometers still to go. Uh, 2 minutes and 24 seconds. Upsin just moving towards the front once again. Little trek there. Little turn at the front with Matthias Vacek. Looks like it might almost be over. They want to be the ones to choose the right line here. Stefan Kung in here. We also have a Total Energies rider in here. Who's that? Number 187. I'll get back to you on who that is. Number 187. That is uh, obviously Total Energies. Not, uh, oh, it's Idris van Giesel. Remember him? He was the one who finished on the podium with Binium Gamay and Christophe Laporte in the Gent World Game in 2022. Uh, 
it looks like the pace is just being increased a bit here. We're coming through Arnberg. Um, yeah, I actually waited at that bus stop with uh, my partner for quite a long time. But uh, the peloton didn't do that um, on the way back. But yeah, they're all trying to fight now for the space. We're very close there. There's a whole sea of Belgian fans on the other side with their caravans. That was really nice to see as well. But right now it's Alpecin, it's Little Trek, it's EF and it's Groupama trying to fight for the front. It looks like uh, this Melissa bike want to try and get the right hand side corner. They all know that this strange chicane is coming up now. So it's all still to play for in terms of this sector here. Jasper Philipsen and also Machu Vanapol. We have an Astana rider in the mix as well. Uh, Gianni Vermesh uh, is up here. The pace is really up up now. It's 60 kilometers an hour. One rider going out the back from Gru for Alperson de Koenig. Two minutes and 28 seconds still. Alperson still really pushing the pace now. This is going to be quite dangerous. Have they forgot about the chicane? It's 70 kilometers an hour. This is crazy. 300 meters away. They're going to come over a rail track as well. And um, yeah, this is going to be... Okay, they're slowing up now. They're coming across the rail track now. Coming towards that chicane. Are anyone going to get caught out? I don't think this has made any difference to the racing. It's going to be... It's actually a bit more dangerous that they've slowed the riders down. Because it's quicker. Oh, in terms of going over the cobbles. To come with a bit of speed, but... Yeah, they're on the Arenberg Forest. We're on the Turin Arenberg. 2.3 kilometers long. Six, no, five, <laughs> five star sector. Here it is. Lidl Trek leading the front. Macho Vanderpool riding fourth wheel. As we can see on the screen, it is where he was riding it two days ago. Visma Lisa bike up here. Uh, but Lidl Trek and Visma Lisa bike are the two teams leading the front now. I'm not quite sure who that Lidl Trek rider is. I don't think it's Mass Pilsen. It might be Mass Pilsen, but we can see the bridge. There's loads of people on this sector. Loads of people. It's so uneven. Oh, one Bismillis bike rider almost caught out here. That is the rugged nature of this. There's no clean line, really. Everything's a bit all over the place. This might be Mass This, Yeah, the absolute ferocious speed happening here. We are going to see the field getting strung out, courtesy of this. But uh, Bottles flying left, right, and center here. Machu Vanderpool in third wheel. This might... Oh, one... Yeah... Uh, Astana rider struggling to keep pace here. Uh, I think punctures are here then everywhere. Number 16 for Visma Lisa bike. Puncture for him. Uh, Tim Van Dijk here. And uh, it's good night. It's out. Uh, Israel Premier Tech here with the riders. One, one, four, six. No, one, four, six. That's not them. That's a brand new kit. That's uh, Decathlon. Uh, La Bruce, he's out at the back. But the four riders out in front are still doing fairly well. I think this is Kasper Eskrain. This looked like the riding style, Kaspar Eskrain, just struggling towards the back here. Kaspar Eskrain, we also saw him on on the sector uh, two days ago. But yeah, Decathlon, uh, they are struggling with their rider here. Uh, Alex Segard struggling, all of them, it's punctures. Macho Vanderpool pushing in the Arenberg Forest. This is what we want to see. Macho Vanderpool putting the pressure on. He's got about 900 meters left of the sector here. The man that you can see on your screens was practicing. There is a distinctive gap now. There is a bit of a gap now between the front four riders that is led by Macho Vanderpool and the next set of riders, which is being led by Groupama FTJ. And I think Jasper Philipsen is on the Groupama rider's wheel, but Macho Vanderpool just showing why he's the boss of this sector. 600 meters left. And what an impressive ride. Seeing the rainbow jersey of Macho Vanderpool powering down this sector is what we all came to see a much of Annapol just eking out a bit more space their 30 man group that we had have has been strung out to to one man followed quite closely by three guys and then a handful of riders coming up later and he just passed the sector where we see him on the screen now as well but much of Annapol just being closed back down by mass person but and absolutely another tactical masterclass here by uh, by the, none other than uh, Alperson. They've got Jasper Philipsen, Marky Mas Pilsen, and they're out. Macho Van is out of the Arenberg Forest. They're out of the Truen Arenberg. And is he just going to sit up for this four-man group? Are we going to get a four-man group doing the last 92.8 kilometers of this race? I think not. I think they might just take the pace out of this. 
I mean, we saw uh, we saw Mr. Tari Pogaccia do 81 kilometers in the Stara Bianchi. But uh, yeah, they're looking around now. They're looking around and they're out of the Arenberg Forest now. Out of the Arenberg Forest. And what a sector that was. Absolutely extraordinary scenes. But not too... Well, yeah, riders were caught out and uh, just feeling the vibrations here. But uh, yeah, bike change here from Don John Degenkorp. No, not bike change. A wheel change. And that's almost like what we saw with... With Miss Melissa bike, John Denkob, not the greatest of luck here, but we got a four-man group at the front, then we got a second group as well. I'll let you know who's in each of the groups here. Um, but yeah, it's certainly interesting riding happening in front of our very eyes. Absolutely incredible riding by many of these riders. And four riders out in front is Macho Van der Poel, winner of last year. Jasper Philipsen, second place of last year. Uh, Mick Van Dijke. That's a good ride by him, by the Dutchman, and Mas Pilsen, who finished fourth last year. So three three out of the top four are out in front now, and the other one is a Visma Lisa bike rider standing in for White Van Aert. But it looks like they're just sitting up here, just sitting up. Uh, and I think oh, Jasper Philipsen needs a bit of help here. Uh, is it a puncture? It looks like he might have a bit of a puncture here. But Mas Pilsen is in a great position here. The Dane, who had a bit of... Uh, well, he was part of that Duasto Flandrin uh, crash that... Yeah, I mean, it was a bad couple of days for Visma Lisa bike, let's be honest, in terms of the crashes. But yeah, great to have so many people here. And let me know where you're watching from as well. Absolutely extraordinary scenes. True in Arenberg. It's such an incredible race. And uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, since we are so many people, if you would like to help the new channel out, the Cycling Day in Action, uh, head over there. I'll share you the True and Arenberg video where I was actually in the True and Arenberg and uh, just trying to ride it myself. And you can see what a mere mortal looks like. And uh, yeah, I would be eternally grateful. Uh, we're on 100 and something, 150 subscribers almost. So, um, yeah, but anyway, back to Paro Bay, 91 kilometers still to go here of the race. It's such a incredible race. We still have plenty of sectors coming up. That was the 19th sector uh, of the race. Our next sector coming up, I'll get that to you shortly as well. Uh, True and Arenberg going through that. I think we just need this updated. We got one in 2.7 kilometers, a three star sector, 1.6 kilometers in Valais. And yeah, these riders, it's absolutely incredible that we've got the split. Quite an interesting dynamic here that uh, Alperson, they want to just keep the race tight, make sure that the pressure is high. And uh, yeah, they've, they've done fairly well to make sure that they made a selection, really isolating the big, the big cheeses uh, so they, they don't have any of their lieutenants alongside them. But Groupama and Fiche here making a move, closing the gap here. I think it might be Stefan Kuhn trying to make a move to try and get over. Oh, Alperson, uh, that was Jasper Philipsen, bike change here. Jasper Philipsen, a bike change. So Machavanapol will want to uh, keep the, uh, the pace down here to make sure that they get Jasper Philipsen back here. All of them looking around. Nobody really want to do, any, uh, to do anything right now. There's a bit of an attack happening on the side here. Group Armour of Fiche trying to get off the road. It's being marked by one of the Alpacin riders and a Movistar rider. Who is the Movistar rider? Movistar and uh, Pyro Bay isn't really two things that we are too familiar with. It's Johan Jacobs. I mean, yeah, you, you, you could have thought it was Lascano. You could have thought it was... Uh, Ivan Garcia Cortina, but it is in fact um, Johan Jacobs, the Swiss rider. Uh, John Degenkolb getting a bit of a tow from his team car to get him back after a bit of bad luck. I mean, we've got plenty of interesting riders in this group. Well, we just have a bit of a lull. 14 riders in this front group. Macho van der Poel, Jasper Philipsen getting back in. Johnny Vermeer, Mick van Dijken, the only Bisma Lisa bike rider up here. So great result by the young rider, 24 years old. This is his second Paro Bay ever. He finished 104th in 2022. 
And here he looks like he could be on for a good result. If he if he gets a top 10 here, what a result that would be. But continuing, Mas Pilsen, the Dane, Stefan Kuhn, Lawrence Pith is up here as well. Søren Vernschald is up here. Vernschald, if you say it in the Norwegian way. Uh, so if he can do something here, Søren Vernschald, the next generation of Chris Froome. Uh, Chris Froome, no. Uh, Christoph, but we are in the next sector here. Three star sector, 1.6 kilometers long. And we've got a Bora rider up here as well. Oh no, I think this might be the... No, no, this is the group. Um, Bora rider is Jordi uh, Mayus, uh, Mayu, uh, the Champs-Élysées winner for Belgium. He's doing a great ride here. But you have to say Tom Pickock's doing a great ride. Debutant of the race. So a uh, good ride by him. But we're talking about Søren Vanschold, Nick Pollitt, uh, Nils Pollitt and Tim Wellens. I think this is Tim Wellens' first ride of the race as well it is six uh, ronde van vlanders 10 Lier no yeah yeah it is this is his first race uh first uh pyro bay of the race so i mean uae have two riders um lawrence piffy ha and stefan kuhn that's two good cards for groupama uh, jasper philipson they're saying is about a second behind but we still have apples in phoenix Alperson de Koenig, oops, just threw it back to an era gone by. But Macho Van der Poel at the front of the race, uh, controlling the pace. And we all know why this is. He's just acting as a doorstop here to before they get Mach uh, Jasper Philipsen back into this. Those two have such great synergy. And uh, maybe this double act can claim another, another, uh, another monument to their esteemed Palmares. Uh, combined, but great to have 600 people here. Mass Pilarsen, Mass Pilarsen struggling. Mass Pilarsen is struggling. The wheels of Mass Pilarsen are not good here. So Mass Pilarsen, uh, yeah, this is not good. He's all exposed. There's no little trek riders around him. So as Jasper Philipsen gets up here, Mass Pilarsen goes out the back, and this is not what you want to see. Mass Pilarsen is out the back. So. Yeah, bad timing by the Dane. Was hoping for a first Danish winner of this. But uh, yeah, thanks James as well for joining. Thanks for ev all these people joining as well in the comments. Uh, let us know what you're watching from as well. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And we're and let's try and get to 100 likes as well. We're only on... How many likes have we got on the stream? Uh, but there's an attack going on here. I think it's Johnny Vermeersch here trying to hit out. The former Gravel World Champion here. Is he just going to try and hit out? Um, 80 likes. We got 80 likes. So we're almost at 100. So well done, guys. Mas Pilsen. A bit frustrated here. Um, not getting his tires at the right time. So, yeah. Big, big, uh, big, big moment here for Mas Pilsen's um, Para Bay. And not good for any Mas Pilsen fans. Any... Danish fans, this was kind of our golden goose, our one card, but frustration there at uh, at the Soigneur. The tension's high. You're not in the front group. I'm sure it's nothing personal, but uh, yeah, tensions are high. The race is disappearing up the road. Yeah. And uh, we'll see. But uh, move is going off the front with Stefan Kuhn. Nils Pollitt, I think, is in that move as well. And Gianni Vermeersch, so three riders going off the front. Macho van der Poel here. He's just getting on the radio. Is he just a bit nervous? Where is uh, Jasper Philipsen? So is the race disappearing? He's looking up behind. So yeah, a bit of argy bargy going on. A bit of confusion. And Mass Pilsen, surely he's not waiting for Mass Pilsen. And you guys answered the call. We're on 122. 122 likes so well done guys let's try and get to 200 and i think it's time for a new poll as well our poll is out so um our new poll will um yeah will mess pilson finish on the podium yes or no we'll just keep them short so i don't have to type too much and we don't miss the race but yeah as jay said as well um it, He's joined the group. Tom Pickock is looking great. Alan asking there. Uh, Pickock, former under-23 winner, as we said earlier. But uh, another another mishap again. Great to have John joining from Pennsylvania. Great to have so many Americans here as well. 
I thought we had, I'm not even sure Matteo Jorgensen was on the start list, actually, when we were kind of, no, he wasn't. Oh, that's a shame. Great form, but maybe not quite the right rider here. Uh, 20 seconds between the match of Vanderpool group and that small move that moved off the front. In terms of Mess Pillars, and he's still got Matthias Vacek here. And that's it. That is all he has here. And then it's just the remnants of the other riders' uh, lieutenants here. So Mess Pillarsen is in a bit of a sticky situation right now. Uh, match of Vanderpool uh, taking cruising here. So uh, the Pillarsen's group is 37 seconds behind the front group, 15 seconds to the Match of Vanderpool group here. Uh, Pickcock on the wheel of Machuan Paul right now. So, yeah, it's uh, it's getting interesting. It's it's a deep little situation going on here in in Paro Bay. So, um, tactics playing out in front, and who's gonna do anything about it? That that is the big question. Uh, yeah, this is a fascinating situation for the race. Are we gonna see? A match of Vanderpool maybe not even getting used or being in the contention for this race. That is a big question as well. But great to have so many people here. And Mateusz Vacek, the national champion for Czech Republic, is doing a sterling uh, effort here in the third group. Plenty of other riders in that third group. If we have the graphic, I'll try and get you exactly who's in the third group. But the principal rider in that third group is um, Mass Pilterson. And uh, yeah, there's... Uh, Inter Macheo in there, Jordi Muñoz is there. Uh, Bisma Lisa Pike have a couple of riders, uh, also UAE. I think Fred Wright finds himself in that group, and Astana have a rider, 202. Who is 202? Uh, I'll get you who 202 is. I think we saw Astana uh, on two days ago on the Arenberg Forest. Uh, 202 is Fedorov, uh, so one of the Kazakhstan riders. And I wonder who is the highest placed Kazakhstani rider we've ever had in Paro Bay. Uh, that's a question to think about. But nevertheless, uh, that aside, uh, Match of Annapol just taking quite easy here. Uh, another move trying to get up the front. Um, and one of them is uh, the debutant of Pickock. It's amazing that Pickock hasn't done this race when you think about it. He's uh, done, he did really well at the Ardennes Classics last year and might look to do something similar in this year's edition. And obviously, with no Remco Venipol there, that's going to be a bit easier for him. But yeah, great to have so many people here in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from as well. Plenty of you writing for uh, in the US. Scott saying there as well. Other Scott, not me, Scott. Scott McMillan, that he was disqualified for an illegal toe. Uh, but the impetus of this front group has just been taken out a bit. They've just taken it sitting up here. So 20 seconds between the front group and uh, the group that has just disappeared off the front. So interesting that they're choosing to sit up here, not wanting to... Uh, follow this group out in front of uh, Niels Pollard, former podium finisher of this race, Stefan Kuhn, former top five, and then Johnny Vermesh, the man who won, won men, men of the day in terms of the Tour of Flanders last week. But Group Berman of they're just doing their best to mark this move for for Stefan Kuhn. Stefan Kuhn has desperately wanted one of these big uh, classics. I mean, we know he's Swiss. Um, he's kind of, yeah, I think Stefan Kuhn is a really good rider, but just not as good as the likes of Fabian Cancellara, etc. Fifth last year at Paro Bay. He was on the podium in 2022 as well. Um, that year when, 2022, what happened in that year? Um at 2021 in the muddy edition, he didn't... Oh, it was the Van Baal edition, sorry. Van Baal and Wout Van Aert finishing second. Uh, no Wout Van Aert this year. Um, but, yeah, I think they are going to make contact now. It's gone up to about 33, 32 seconds here. So uh, a few riders trying to escape out this group as well now. Uh, I think uh, Maspilson is back in this group because uh, Matthias Vacek is leading this group now. But yeah, strange situation that they're not completely, maybe they're just saving the bullets a bit and getting ready for the next big wind up. And then we'll see a real big onslaught from, from the riders here. But 82.3 kilometers still to go here. The next sector uh, is what they're on now. It's four star sector, 3.7 kilometers long. And yeah, this should be a bit of a leg sapper. I mean, 
uh, yeah, one thing is that the cobbles are so hard. The other thing is the amount of energy it takes out of you, the vibration that travels through your body, it just takes a bit of hurt out of you. By no means I am an expert of these things, just having gone on the Arenberg a few times, but uh, yeah. But this group is very small. I'll try and get a screenshot uh, for this second group on the road following in pursuit of that first group on the road. And uh, yeah, it's quite interesting that so many riders are choosing not to really put the pressure on here and letting that little... Yeah, I mean, plenty of teams have a rider up there, uh, don't have a rider up there and probably should do something. So they may be just playing, banking on it not quite being a... Uh, a race winning move here but uh, you can see the group we have, the main group here now or the favorites group they have just gotten onto the sector as well being led on by Little Trek Little Trek have found another ally so there's another Le Little Trek guy here now with them uh, I mean Little Trek such a phenomenal phenomenal yeah, phenomenal team um, and great to everyone who subscribed in the last few minutes as well. Welcome, welcome, Victor, Joe, Mick, Nicholas. And let's try and get to 40,000. Maybe we can make it on this stream. And uh, remember that I am going to do a recap race analysis after the race as well with a bit of footage as well uh, of the race. So uh, that should be interesting as well. But you can see the group on your screens now. And just so you would get an idea of who's there. 2.5 kilometers still left of this very long sector, 81 kilometers left of the race. The riders out in front, Gianni Vermeersch, former gravel world champion, uh, Niels Pollard, former finisher of, uh, podium finisher of this race, and last week finisher in uh, Paro Bay, uh, Bay, Tour of Flanders. And right now, in um, in the group behind, we have got Little Trek really pushing the pace on. The pace on. It is a great situation right now for Ups de Koenig. And this is, of course, because Mass Pilsen wants to win this race. He wants to become the first Danish winner of Paro Bay. We've never had a Danish winner. And uh, let's see if he can do so. I have my doubts. I think the, the Alpecin de Koenig duo is absolutely formidable. They dominated Milan San Remo. And even in the Tour of Flanders match, Van Apol didn't even need Jasper Philipsen to dominate that. He had his very loyal lieutenant of uh, Alex uh, Axel Lawrence and Johnny Vermeesh and yeah, the form he's on right now is absolutely empowerful or however you want to call it Tom subscribing as well welcome 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 let's try and get to 40,000 we're very close to 40,000 but now Pitcock is moving to the front he's just injecting a bit of pace into this move here Pitcock just injecting a bit of pace what a bit of surge by the Prince of Yorkshire, he wasn't too comfortable with the pace there and just wanting to string out this bunch a bit more. It's quite sizable right now. I would say about 20, 30 riders. So they kind of regrouped after that a bit of lull we saw before, but great riding by Pickcock here. He's such a, well, he's cyclocross world champion, mountain bike, Olympic champion. We, we can't only throw enough accolades on him. Uh, great to have you here, Pepe, as well. Uh, welcome, welcome, everyone, to the community. Uh, it's a very nice community that we built up in our last few years. So welcome, Daniel, as well. But uh, Matthias Vacek has taken over. It was just a bit of injection of pace there by Tom Pickock. Riding third wheel is John Degenkolb, former rider from Little Trek in one of their iterations. And then, yeah, it's, it's being struck out. The pace is high. These guys, the injection of pace that we're seeing is is uh, is crazy. So, um, yeah, I have so much respect for the pros even more. And I urge every single one of you to go to the cobbles and see it for yourself. Try and ride them because it is an experience. And uh, since we are 700 and uh, if you want to help, it is we are a small outfit. Uh, subs well, subscribe to the new channel. I check that out because uh, that there's going to be a, a lot of new things coming up there as well, um, and uh, yeah, greatly appreciate to try and get that to a thousand as well. So we're trying to get to forty thousand and a thousand on that one, um, but uh, yeah, uh, but that was a bit too many butts from me. 
in terms of this race, the pace is high. 32 seconds. They haven't taken too many seconds out of, of that first charge, that front group. Uh, 78.5 kilometers still to go. That front group is working quite well with Stefan Kuhn, uh, Johnny Vermeersch, Nils Pollitt. Nils Pollitt desperately wants a win. And it's all still to play for in terms of getting that big cheese here, getting that big cobblestone. They, I think all three of them get a cobblestone. But in terms of getting that big cobblestone, you have to be the winner. And uh, yeah, who is going to win? What I was saying as well. Oh my God. I'm not singing the Stephen Kuhn song, unfortunately. Um, we got the Echelon Cyclone podcast as well coming tomorrow. So if you want to see you and Patrick really dissect what's been happening in the week, including Paro Bay, uh, look out for that. But 77.9 kilometers, 152 for uh, EF Education Easy Post, which I think, who, who do we decide that was? Stefan Bissinger. So Stefan Bissinger and Stefan Kuhn. The two Swiss riders. There's plenty of Swiss riders in this race. Silvan Dilia is in here. Uh, Fabian Len uh, Lenenhard for Groupama FBJ. Obviously, we also have uh, the other Swiss rider, Johan Jacobs for Movistar. So many, many riders in terms of flying the Swiss flag here. But uh, Matthias Vacek, I think, is the only Czech rider in the race, flying the flag proudly in that second group. And Fabio uh, Christian as well. So... Yeah, incredible, incredible riding here by these riders. Um, well, Stefan Bissinger and, uh, well, Delia. Delia finished on the podium. Do we, yeah, we can't forget that either. That was with Peter Sagan. We have uh, plenty of Danish riders as well. Kasper Pilsen, Kasper Eskrein, Mats Pilsen, uh, Matthias Norsko, friend of the channel. Uh, so is Kasper Pilsen, by the way. Uh, Alexander Selby as well for Bingol, but Bingol don't seem like they have anyone in this group. Mikhail Merko as well, but I think he's, yeah, not there either. I mean, plenty of these teams aren't even targeting Paru Bay, but because of the nature of the race or the nature of the system, they have to send someone here. Miguel Biao as well, who was one of those, uh, well, finished fourth last week in uh, Tour of Flanders, was part of that very strong trio that we had from, um, from, uh, uh, UAE Team Emirates. I almost called them Little Trek. And he, again, one of these strong, tough riders, good TT engine, and you would think that that could be a rider. Spea Strad Hagenes wearing number 13. He's put it upside down. Uh, Visma Lisa bike. Can they do something here with their, their kids, essentially? Because I think Christophe Laporte is not in this group, not feeling great, the European champion. 28 seconds now is the group well, the gap between this match of Vanderpool group and the front trio out in front with Stefan Kuhn, Jenny Vermeesh, and uh, the final rider, which uh, is Niels Pollitt, the podium finisher of last week. But in terms of the next sectors coming up, we've got um, in 1.3 kilometers, we've got the Briol uh, sector, which is 2.4 kilometers long, and we're getting ever closer to finishing, well, well, Closer and closer. Uh, the last cobblestone sector is in 74.8 kilometers to go. So that's the more processional. But in terms of the the hard sectors, the last hard sector is the Cafo de Labre, uh, 2.1 kilometers long. Um, and uh, that is with 58.8 kilometers. Stefan Kuhn, I think he came down in Tour of Flanders. So... Yeah, I think this might be the best situation for him to be in. Um, maybe that that should be our next question. Will Stefan Kuhn return to the podium? In terms of Mess Pilsen, 246 of you have voted. 53% of you believe that he is going to finish on the podium. That means 47% of you believe he's not going to finish on the podium. And uh, can we get a little recap of how the race has unfolded? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Josh Tarling has uh, unfortunately been disqualified for an illegal bottle hold and Ups and Koenig have really just splintered the race and forced the selection of what we have now and they were forcing the selection even more when it came to the John Arenberg. We've had Jasper Philipsen with a puncture. We've had uh, John Degenkop with a puncture. We've had Mas Pilsen with a puncture as well. Mas Pilsen, uh, or Macho Van looking very lively on the, on the uh, in the Arenberg Forest. But right now we are in the Valig uh, Briol. Briol. 
and uh, it's 2.4 kilometers long and this is quite an interesting situation for the riders happening out in front and um, yeah we'll wait and see if anyone can do something here John Deckenkorb trying to move up here Matthias Vacek doing a solid ride uh, to just stay uh, up there to do his best his best here for his teammate Mas Pilsen Machuvanapol riding on the side of the road here Stefan Bissinger still up here uh, but we haven't really gone through the the group uh, lately so we'll we'll just do that as well in terms of this front group uh, second group on the road Machuvanapol still there with Jasper Philipsen and Mick van Dijk in there as well uh, Mas Pilsen with Vacek Luis uh, Aski uh, Lawrence Pithy the New Zealand rider John Degenkolb, uh, Matthias Mikkels, Matthias Mikkels. We also have, we actually have both the my, uh, Van Dijkke twins and Piers Ranhagenes, the young Norwegian, Ugo Page and uh, Matthias Mikkels, the two riders for Intermarché. Rasmus Tilla and Søren Varnschild riding for Uno X. Tim Wellens in this group. Tom Pickock and his countrymen of friend Wright in this group as well. Jordi Meus. Uh, the only Bora rider, Stefan Bissinger, the only EF rider, Johan um, Jakobs, the only uh, movie star rider, Dries van Giesel, the only, uh, what are they called now, direct energy uh, rider, and then we've got two riders from uh, Lotto, Lotto Destiny, as well as Fedorov from Astana and Kamil Malik from Q36.5. So a, 30, a 25 man group chasing a three man group. And uh, certainly a lot of riders uh, looking for uh, looking for uh, all time best result here, and uh, a lot of surprising names not here. Maybe not too surprising. Uh, no Lascano. I mean, who did I put in the top five? Uh, we can just check my top five and see if I, I got a good a good read on the race. But Niels Poller here and Vermesh and Kung, they're all doing great turns here to just stay out of trouble doing their best to keep the keep the relay going even Vermesh doing a few turns but yeah they're riding on the easy side of the tarmac now just trying to keep out of trouble and uh, yeah as we said it's uh, the fatigue building up is one of one of the things that you want to try and keep away from but uh, yeah, Johnny Vermesh. Well, I'll go through the best results as well. Obviously, we know the best result for Stefan Kuhn was third place. The best result from Niels Pollitt was second place. And the best result for Johnny Vermesh, I'm not quite sure. But in terms of the top five, I put uh, number five, Laporte. He's not here, so that was a bad choice. I, I did say he was a rogue pick. But Dylan Van Baal, I was kind of saying maybe he would be in the kind of card that they would be playing. But absolutely not. Uh, I'm not. Even, yeah, he is here, Delaman Bar, the former champion. But he's not here uh, in terms of this selection. I also pointed towards Nils Pollitt, and that's looking okay now because he's up here towards the front. And then another rider I pointed towards was Josh Tarling. He's been disqualified. Um, uh, Morgado is not even on the start list. We also well, uh, Mosato. I was thinking because he finished second place. If he could survive the cobbles of Flanders, maybe he could be up here, but he's absolutely not here. Then it was Jasper Philipsen, he's up here, so that was quite evident. Uh, Mas Pilsen as well, and then Machu Vanapol. So, I mean, uh, they most of them worked. Most of them worked, so uh, not not too bad. So a reason to come back for the top five on the Cycling Day and Extra channel uh, next week. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, 71.7 kilometers still to go. 14 seconds here uh, for Va uh, Van der Poel's group. So, yeah, Little Trek are bringing this gap back. So, yeah, it's it's really, it's coming back together for sure. So, we'll, we'll wait and see, but I, I'm not too sure that these three riders are going to win as we come to the next sector. Uh, we were talking about this sector before, four-star sector. 2.4 kilometers and uh, this should be quite interesting i mean any rider can get a flat we've seen that already jasper philipson we've had uh mass person getting a flat as well 
Uh, great to have 900 people in the chat. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's try and get to 40,000 subscribers. Plenty of you have subscribed on this stream already. So thank you, every single one of you. But 71 kilometers to go. We have plenty of pave to go. Crash, crash. We've had a crash from uh, Visma Lisa bike here. Visma Lisa bike just struggling in this sector here. I think it was one of the Van Dijk twins. Um, but yeah, argy bargy going on now. And um, uh, yeah, well, we'll see what happens when they close the gap as well. Are we going to see another move or are we going to see Little Track just burn up their men? But yeah, a crash there, a bit of bother there. And that's the thing. Any, any part of the cobbles can put anyone in bother. And that is the 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 big lottery of this race but four star sector 2.4 kilometers where all well the break are f quite deep into the sector now they're keeping a great line but yeah this melissa bike just where was it i think it was close to the start of the sector where we had one of the the riders was he just i'm just trying to see if we can see it the oh it was was it in the corner where we saw the slip up yep slip up yeah it was in the corner it just lost Lost the wheel there. So, uh, yeah, I think it was, it would, might be Mick Van Dijker. But, yeah, it, th these wet roads are the real danger here. They really do produce some interesting points of the race. But, yeah, less than 70 kilometers to go. Less than 900 meters of the race. Or in terms of the sector, not the race. There's still a lot to go. But, yeah, it seems like that was the only bother for the Peloton right now. Uh, Philipson is a top five rider in the world. D agree or disagree? Absolutely agree. And an absolutely nice guy as well, I have to say. Having met him in person, so down to earth. And if your hero is Jasper Philipson, that is the guy you want to meet. Johnny Vermeer starting to struggle here a bit. And Matthias Vacek has been used up, but Vacek has done a solid ride for his leader. Uh, there's about five seconds of a gap now between this front three we've been getting accustomed to and the Macha van der Poel group. We're about 34.6 kilometers into the 55.7 kilometers of sectors. So we've got around 20, sec 20 kilometers of uh, pave left of the race. And uh, Gianni Vermesh here, there, it, the pace has started to accelerate a bit here. Plenty of interesting riders of note in this race. And yeah, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. We're a very friendly bunch here. And um, yeah, a lot of things happening in terms of this race and quite interesting to see how this race is being played out and how the riders have, uh, yeah, done this. So um, we'll wait and see, but welcome to everyone who's been joining in the last few minutes as well. And Mass Pilsen a bit exposed here with around 70 kilometers to go. That's not great when there's a match of Annapol and, a, and uh, Jasper Philipsen in this group. So a bit unnumbered here. He's not going to be out sprinting. Uh, let's be honest. He's not going to be out sprinting Jasper Philipsen. He's not going to be out kicking match of Annapol. So it's a dire situation right now to be Mass Pilsen. So... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see here, but it could be a, yeah, what is going to happen now? That is the big question in terms of the dynamics of the group. Are we going to see them just let out a bit, see a bit of a lull in the pace like we saw last time? Um, but uh, yeah, it's all still to play for here in the group. And uh, there is, of course, that big cobblestone mantle on, on, the, on the line and uh, so many yeah riders uh, want to get this so we'll wait and see uh what are we saying as well uh great to have bruce as well joining us great to have so many people here and uh we're having a bit of trouble with the wi-fi so i'll see if if it can just i'll i'll try and do my best my end to smooth it out uh but yeah it's all still to play for. Maybe closing down some pages will help. In the race, we still have uh, 68 kilometers to go. Okay, you're saying it's breaking up badly. I'll try and see what I can do about that. Uh, maybe I need to just shut down some things here. Uh, it looks like Tim Wellens. Is this Tim Wellens trying to go up the road? And 
I'll just see. Is let me know if it's better as well. Let me know if the stream's better, because that was a bit annoying uh, for everyone listening. But Tim Wellens, is this Tim Wellens? I think it might be Tim Wellens trying to get off the road with an Alperson rider and another rider here. Pithy, is this Pithy and uh, Visma Lisa bike rider as well? So they're trying to pro uh, play their cards. Some of these other riders. And I'm just trying to see if I can close anything down so we get a bit of a better stream here. The Wi-Fi is supposed to be amazing, but whatever reason, it's choosing not to play ball. Uh, but yeah, we're seeing at the back here, Stefan Bissinger, the Swiss rider, aiming to be the best Swiss rider of the day, but obviously Stefan Kuhn is here as well. Bike change here, and uh, maybe if I lower the quality of of the the stream we can get a better signal but yeah it's all well it's quite calm now in terms of our next sectors we'll i'll look out for that as well um yeah i'll just try and see what i can get rid of in terms of uh yeah so we make the stream a bit smoother we don't want anything to hamper the stream but yeah, 66.6 kilometers, make of that what you will. Uh, a lot of looking about here. This Melissa bike have strong numbers in here. We've got uh, Movistar don't have, I think they might still have Jakobs in here. Stefan Bissiger making his way through the race convoy to join the group as well. And yeah, it's, it's all happening. It's yeah, it's calm before the storm once again. So are we going to see someone do big attacks? Are we going to see anything like that? Or are they all just waiting to the next big sector? Uh, I mean, what would you do in this situation? I mean, someone like Mess Pilsen is in a bit of a pickle with not too many strong teammates in the reserves here. And you have the prospect of uh, not only Jasper Philipsen and... Um, uh, Philipson and uh, Macho Vanderpool, but there's other riders in there. Visma Lisa Bike have cards. Uh, Stefan Kung is still here. Fred Wright has been very quiet. We even have uh, Uno X up here with, uh, yeah, but Fedorov as well. Can he do a ride? Plenty of plenty of things that can happen in this race still. So um, yeah, it's just a bit of a lull before we get to the next action here. And I'm just trying to get as much space or whatever. I have no idea why why the stream was acting up. So I'm trying to see if we can just uh, help it a bit here. But great to have so many people in the stream. And uh, of course, we are doing the recap race analysis. Uh, Patrick will be along for that as well. So um, make sure to join me for that. And uh, yeah, it's been a great race so far. We've seen uh, the race being strung out. We've seen, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of tactical things going up in front, and uh, we'll see what happens in terms of the race uh, deeper into this. But sixty-five kilometers still to go here, and uh, it's all still to play for in the race. I think my picture has, has frozen a bit, so apologies for that. Okay, the audio is fine, but the picture is a bit all over the place, so apologies for that, guys. And uh, I'll try and see if I can get the stream a bit better, but we are onto the next sector, 67, 64.7 kilometers, 1.1 sector. This sector is a bit a uh, bit of a less, less good one here in terms of the road because the hard sector... The hard sector, you can kind of ride, ride in the gutter and that makes it a bit easier for the riders. And as we all know, I don't like when, why are you having cobblestones if you can ride on the easier sector? Just make it a pure cobblestone sector. But towards the back, we're seeing Intermache Wanty still have riders that want to be in the play uh, for the race as well. And yeah, 600 meters left of this sector. Plenty of sectors still to come here. And uh, we're just seeing Alex Segard here struggling towards the back here, the Lotto Destiny rider. They're riding into the gutter, and I don't like it. 
I really don't like it. Absin just choosing to not ride on the sector. This is not a good look for the race. They should definitely not be doing this. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. They if they haven't if they haven't closed it off, I uh, I think it's fair game. Um, but as a fan, as a purist, I would love to see them tackle all all of the course, not just uh, the side of it. But yeah. Um, Fred Wright, uh, John Degenkolb choosing the gutter as well. Much of Vanderpool riding alongside John Degenkolb. Remember when that happened last year? He just got a bit of a shoulder here. But at the front, we still got Jenny Vermesh, 63.6 kilometers. And they're almost off this sector, I think. They're riding on to smoother road here. But uh, I just don't like it because they almost hit fans as well. And then the fans get the blame here. They're just the feed zone as well here. It's strung the, the group out a bit, but it's not quite done the damage that we might have expected here. Um, yeah, so it's it's fascinating that the race hasn't really been blown apart here. But yeah, a lot of riders uh, doing their best to stay staying out of trouble, etc. And uh, yeah. Okay, audio better. Okay, we got an audio better, so that's good. Uh, just trying to close every single page down that I can so it's not interrupting the feed as well. Um, and maybe it was memory from the laptop as well, so clearing that out was a good thing. Nevertheless, uh, we're just seeing the riders here. A uh, bit of a lull again. Uno X coming to the front. They haven't really been to the front. And this looks like Søren Vardenschold, I think, or Rasmus Stiller. They quite tall statues both of them but Absin with Johnny Vermesh still have the front of the race the stranglehold of the front of the race and yeah this the side path is I'm not a fan of it I'm really not a, a fan of it and I think many of you aren't either um but you you don't want them to get suspended for it either because that would be silly as well great job Miguel as well from Portugal great job so many people around the world uh we're all uh, united by the love of this race, Paro Bay, the hell of the north, the queen of the classics. And right now we have Little Trek at the front, 62.4 kilometers still to go here. And it's all still to play for in terms of the win, in terms of the race. Who's going to win? It's definitely going to be someone in this group, you would think. No breakaway out in front as we've been used to in the past few seasons. But this year it's a holy different race. Visma Lee Spike, despite not having Wout Van Aert in the race, are still well represented with the two Van Dijker twins and Petran Hagenes. And Intermarché, despite not having Binyam Gamay or Lawrence Rex in this group, still have two riders as well. I think UAE just trying to accelerate a bit, trying to increase the pace. Uh, what can they do here? That is the big question. Um, yeah, they're good, good riding here by them. And great to have uh, plenty of riders subscribing as well. Another Scott, Scott Jones, uh, Timo as well. I'm thinking Finland, uh, Sissel as well, uh, Gumai as well, Gumay. And uh, let us all know where you're watching from. And if you haven't already and you're watching, why not subscribe? Let's try and get to 40,000 as a little community that we are. Um, yeah. 61.7 kilometers UAE towards the front here, being marked by Fred Wright. Alex Segard's just struggling there to keep up the pace here. And yeah, it's still, it's still not like the, the incredible, like rampant push that we, we, we were expecting here. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a fascinating look here. And uh, for whatever reason, I've been kicked out of the, the YouTube page, so I don't think I can change the poll uh, right now. I'll try and do so because we've had that poll for quite a long time. But uh, yeah, 62.2 kilometers still to go here of the race and uh, all still to play for in terms of the win. Visma Lisa bike, what do they do? Do they use uh, Mick van Dijkert? Do they use, uh, oh, maybe I can control it from this this page. Who knows? Uh, maybe they, they'll they try and throw it up. Um, in in terms of yeah the numbers game trying to get in a move i mean many of these riders could are on the line for getting the best result here i actually think closing that youtube page oh maybe not i've spoken too soon 
Um, but Tom Pickock, we're seeing him in the shot now, the debutant of Paro Bay. Yeah, can you believe that? The under-23 Paro Bay champion. Wasn't at, uh, well, was he at the Tour of Flanders last week? I'm not quite sure. But we'll wait and see if he can do a big result here. 60.7 kilometers to go. And a lot still to play for. Rasmus Tilla is the Norwegian, not Søren Vanschild. So Søren Vanschild has unfortunately been dispatched. But we still have uh, a whole host of riders. Two Brits, two Swiss. Uh, well, actually three Swiss. Uh, plenty of Belgian riders, a Dutch rider and a Kazakhstan, plus a Polish rider, uh, Malik and Fedorov from Q36.5 and um, and Astana, Kazakhstan team respectively. But great to have 600 people in the chat. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button as well. Um, is Pickock anywhere near the front? I mean, he is in that sizable group. We're coming to the next sector now. Three star sector, 1.7 7 kilometers long. So three-star sector still still is a vicious sector to say the least. It's not not exactly uh, the worst sector to say the least. Oh no, I'm breaking up. Alan says, uh, "Okay, I'll try and do my best again." But we're getting Gianni Vermesh as I just try and uh, clear anything that isn't needed. And Gianni Vermesh doing a, a solid ride here uh, to just keep everyone out of, of trouble in terms of oh, much wonderful, much wonderful. The king himself has gone. The king himself is going. The king has just lifted the pace. 60 kilometers from the finish. The king, the one and only Machu has just lifted the pace. And this is what we were contemplating. Were we going to see this 1-2 attack from... From... Uh, 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 not Wisman, Lisa Bike. From Alperton de Koenig. They are so strong. They've got the best sprinter in the world. And the best puncher as well. And uh, yeah, fascinating stuff. How the other teams are going to react to this. Uh, we'll wait and see what happens. And um, yeah, Alperson, they are really just throwing the cat amongst the pigeons here. This, who's going to be able to answer the call here? Who's going to be able to fight this move? This is, um, yeah, is he gonna? Is he gonna do something here in terms of? Uh, doing something and Toma asking me if I can play Macklemore. Yeah, if I want to get uh, absolutely uh, copyright striked. Uh, but yeah, what a move here. We saw Johnny Vermesh just upping the pace here and then doing his best to keep the pe pressure high. And if we knew that this was the moment that Macho Van Apple launching, it, uh, they were, Stefan Kung, I think, was trying to follow, but then Macho Van Apple just disappears off the front. Nobody can do anything to keep this off. Well, keep this flying Dutchman. Is this going to be his first? Well, our first defense. Um, yeah. Is this going to be the 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 winning move? Is this going to be the time? Yeah, we're asking for a new still as well. Yeah, I'll get a new still. But Mas Pilsen is the one leading the chase, and this is just nightmare situations for many of these riders. This is not what they wanted to see. Macho Vanapol disappearing off the front. Just a solid attack there. Nobody able to do anything to to stop the Flying Dutchman here. And what a ride by Macho Vanapol here. This is absolutely him. Panache, panache, panache. Bucket loads of panache. And uh, yeah, the man, the myth, the legend, Macho Vanapol. Is he going to be the first defending champion of Paro Bay since Fabian Cancellara? Is he going to be the first world champion since Peter Sagan? Is he going to be the first rider to win the Tour of Flanders Paro Bay double since 1962? That is an amazing stat when you think about it. So many accomplishments to his names if he does this. But equally, it, it, the race is nervous. It's 10 seconds now. Mess Pilsen could bring this back. Jasper Philipsen could still be in contention. Could he win Milan San Remo? Paru Bay, that is the big question. Uh, yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. This is a fascinating move by Alperson. We were thinking that this was going to happen, but finishing this far, well, doing it this far out, maybe not. The next sector is 3.1 kilometers at two, well, 3.1 kilometers time at uh, 2.7 uh, 2 kilometers long in terms of the sector. 
And uh, yeah, it's all still to play for in terms of this. He's really opened up the race once again. Macho Vanderpool, you can see him in your screen. I'll get you a new still as well. Um, but Macho Vanderpool, what an absolutely ferocious attack there. Thunder punch there by uh, the Flying Dutchman. And is this another monument we're seeing? Uh, as James says as well, he's looking very, very comfortable. Um, great to have Freya as well. Uh, Swiss, Swedish West Coast. Uh, great to have you here. Um, fellow Scandinavian. I am, of course, Danish, even though I have quite a English accent. Don't let that fool you. Uh, it's only because I don't like the Danish accent. So uh, I jest, I jest. Any Danes in the comments, uh, I apologize to my fellow countrymen. But Macho Van Paul, is he going to win? That is the big question we should be asking. If I can get back in to the YouTube account, I'll do that. But it's, it's time. Um, yeah, uh, it's time to do the next thing as well. The next uh, still, I'll get that for you guys. But Macho Van Paul, we've seen it so often, him just disappearing off the front. But it's normally a cyclocross race when he does this. And he's doing it once again now in a monument setting. He did it in Gen Well, well no, he didn't do it in Gen Well again. He did it in E3, and he did it in uh, the Tour of Flanders. And now we're seeing it once again now in Paro Bay. He did it last year in Paro Bay, and this time doing it a bit further out. So yeah, he showed everyone who was in the bus in the Arenberg Forest. And uh, yeah, what is he going to be able to do here? That is the big question. Is he going to be able to win? Is Mas Pilsen going to be able to drag him back? Mas Pilsen finds himself on the other side of uh, a great move. And uh, yeah, Macho Van der Poel, the king of the cobbles, the king of the road, the king of cyclocross. Yeah, nobody can really follow him when it comes to these accelerations on the cobbles. And uh, he's so smooth on the cobbles. I mean, you've got a first-hand view of it there from the practice uh, a few days ago. So, yeah, absolutely crazy stuff here by Macho Van uh, But it looks like Jasper Philipsen is on marking duties here with Johnny Vermeersch. So are we going to see uh, Jasper Philipsen get into contention once again like he was last year and maybe get on the podium again? His big goal was uh, Paro Bay, Jasper Philipsen, but is it going to be taken away? Okay, in terms of the group, we got 15 seconds now built up by Macho Van Paul. But as we know, the seconds, the gaps, it's a different thing uh, in terms of the monuments. That you get tired and uh, yeah, this is a different scenario than what we're used to. It's time for a new poll as well. I'll do my best to try and get it. <laughs> in so we can change that as well but yeah 54.6 kilometers still to go of the race macho van Paul dancing across the cobbles here oh well across the race and uh we'll wait to see if he can do something in terms of the next sector coming up uh the Cafo de labra is the big one that we're waiting for as well four star sector or the the campaign pavilion uh, 1.8 and then a two point a one kilometer sector that's coming up in about 30 kilometers time so that is an interesting time to look out for as well but right now it's absolutely go time for the riders and uh, it's panic stations for many of these riders what's going to happen now uh, we wait and see what's going to happen in terms of Macho Van Paul. Macho Van Paul is on the next sector it's a 2.7 kilometers uh, sector four star sector and um yeah, everything's still on the line here. Macho Van Paul dancing along these sectors and doing everything he can to just eke out his advantage. It's gone up 20 seconds is the margin now. Little Trek have uh, Mas Pilsen trying to close this gap down. He's so used to this, but Mas Pilsen has been followed by his Milan San Remo rival of Jasper Philipsen. So it's still a sizable group here. Fedorov in here as well. That's Stana Ryder. Dries van Kessel as well. There's a lot of riders. It's not like uh, Van um, Mespilsen has drawn out uh, Jasper Philipsen by himself. So there's a lot of riders still chasing uh, Macho Van Paul, who still has two kilometers of a sector. We've covered 
about 39 uh, sec, uh, kilometers of the sector of the pave out of the 57.7 kilometers we still have quite a lot of sectors to go but it's about 16 kilometers of sector happening um yeah so it's all still to play for in this and uh, we'll wait and see what is going to happen here in this race now the the race is absolutely been taken by the scruff of the neck by match of 24 seconds now 24 seconds this chasing group is splintering up a bit and uh yeah the cohesion is probably not as great as they should be if you're trying to hunt down a man such as match of so it's all still to play for here in this race and uh i mean match of this is the ideal situation for alpers in having jasper phillips and marking the best man uh, in that second group and then having uh, match of out in front so uh yeah um i'll try and see if i can change the poll as well i think i can um perhaps but yeah it's it's a fascinating scenario in front of our very eyes and uh, i think it is very much time for a new poll uh many of you believing that mess pills might finish on the poll uh in, might finish on the the podium i don't think so i think he's doing too much now too much work to try and well he's doing way too much work here to do anything like jay says as well the problem is the rest is alperson uh who wants to bring philipson along but they have no choice yeah it's philipson is one of the best riders on the covers as well so it looks like it's not going to be able to do anything here to stop stop this Alperson win now they need to get rid of Jasper Phillips and, and chase down Matrovatopol if, if they have any hope of doing anything now but yeah great to have 600 people in the chat and uh, yeah apologies for any of the the just disruption by a uh, strange wi-fi connection but Matrovatopol is still out in front tackling this sector beautifully 36 seconds it's built up to now riding in the gutter naughty naughty uh but uh, i mean it's there's no rules against it and it's not exactly marked uh fred wright struggling here towards the back the uh not the dutch national champion despite the stripes but the um, british national champion but now it looks like mass pillarson is he able to just eke out the group here a bit but the problem is they need to really drop these guys if they're gonna be able to do something uh because when it comes to the non-sectors uh, they'll just regroup again and then they have the same problem but right now Mass Pilsen is being followed by not only uh, Jasper Philipsen the teammate of of uh, um, of Machu Vanderpool, but also Jasper Philipsen so Mermesh and Philipsen are both on the wheel of Mass Pilsen so it's not a great time to be a Mass Pilsen uh, right now he's doing his best to just keep the pace up do he? putting the pressure on and he's got a bit of a gap now to Jerry Vermesh here trying to catch him out by jumping out of a curb onto the cobbles but now there is a bit of a gap between Mas Pilsen, Jasper Philipsen and Jerry Vermesh to the rest of the group and he just yeah he, he's an absolutely in a big engine um, Mas Pilsen but I mean against the likes of Jasper Philipsen I just don't think he has it in him so right now, Mas Pilsen finds himself with two, not one, two Alperson de Koenig riders on his wheel and one of them up the road. So nightmare stuff for Mas Pilsen. But great to have 900 people in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's try to get to 40,000. And uh, yeah, I will keep banging on about it. But if you haven't already, make sure to check out the new channel as well. Um the cycling day in action where where we had uh where i did the the true Arenberg. so it's an interesting video and there is a cameo for macho vanderpool um so check that out and uh, subscribe if you haven't already to help me out on that one just a little thank you for everything i don't know it's interesting it's interesting stuff that's what i'm trying to say but nonetheless, uh, we have got a lot of sectors still to, despite having less than 15 kilometers of sectors left, there's still 50 kilometers left of the race still to go with Macho Vanderpool 
driving his race out in front. No one really close to him. 54 seconds is built up even more. And uh, his next sector is coming in 1.3 kilometers to 3 kilometer sector. The Monia Peville, a five star sector. And here, some of the other riders behind him could get caught out. But 59 seconds is almost a minute. And this is the trouble. Group two dynamics. Oh, this is bad. This is bad, guys. You've got Match of Annapol up the road, but none of them want to carry Jasper Philipson all the way to the podium. But I mean, guys, you're going to lose anyway. You have to get rid of him. Get rid of Jasper Philipson. But a minute and five seconds now. Someone has to do something. UAE trying to just pull out here as well. They're trying to do anything that they can. Great to have a thousand people in the chat now. Let me know where you're watching from and who do you think is going to win? Is this a match of Underpool for con conclusion now? And uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, Trent just saying there as well. Tom Tom Boonen started 14 editions of uh, of this race and never had a flat. That's quite remarkable. But this Melissa bike is trying to move now, they're trying to get up the road. Jasper Philipson marking that move quickly. So Jasper Philipsen and Johnny Vermesh in the perfect situation here. I mean, Philipsen is in a great situation here. He'll outsprint anyone in that group. He'll probably be the most fresh guy when we come to the velodrome. But in terms of, yeah, this group, oh, I think it's, yeah, Machavanapol is on this sector now. What is he going to do here on the Monte Pavel? Three kilometers of five-star sectors, just absolutely bossing it like we know. The biggest threat to Machavanapol, I think, is a puncture at this stage. One minute and nine seconds, one minute and ten seconds. It's eking out ever so slightly. And this is in incredible stuff here by Machavanapol. Doing his best to just eke out the performance ever so slightly. Doing his best to, yeah, doing whatever he can to... Yeah, get out in front. And uh, this is all still to play for in terms of the podium positions. One of the riders, I think, is one of the Vedeka twins here managing to get a gap. It's being marked by Johnny Vermesh. It's being marked by Stefan Kuhn. But, yeah, it's all still to play for in this race for the minor positions if the race win is over. 1 minute and 12 seconds. You need to get him back, guys. Macho Vanipo is not a rider you just let have a margin like this. And, um, yeah, Macho Vanipo producing magics on the road of Pyro Bay once again. And Jasper Philipsen might have to settle to uh, second place. Once again, John Dagenkov in this group. So many teams having an ample number of riders, but choosing not to use them, which is frustrating for cycling fans, frustrating for any neutrals but uh yeah great to have uh, jay watching dutch as well plenty of dutch people here as well yeah why not let everyone know where you're from and watching the race from so we can see just how uh diverse our little community is but uh yeah we're trying to get to forty thousand. so if you haven't already hit the like button and subscribe to the channel we're 400 likes so, uh, subscriptions away from hitting forty thousand. But 47.2 kilometers is all that's left for Macho Vanderpool. 1 minute and 22 seconds here of a margin. So it's eked out 10 more seconds here. So yeah, oh my goodness. It's all still to play for in terms of maybe not the win, but definitely the podium positions. Uh, UAE are at the front here. Are we going to get another Nils Pollard podium here? Tim Wellens looking for his best result in Pyro Bay so far. Tom Peacock as well, looking for a great result. And uh, in his first ever Pyro Bay, but at the front, match of Annapol dancing towards another monument cobbled win. Obviously, he's finished on the podium third in 2022, winning in 2023, winning potentially in 2024 as well. So it's so interesting what's happening here as well. Great to have someone watching from Jamaica on the beach as well. Um, near Kingston maybe but um, yeah this is uh, yeah uh, Trent having a cigar and a coffee in jacuzzi room oh my god guys you're having such a good day uh, and watching Pyro Bay but yeah I'm hoping nobody's booing Macho Van on the side of the road here Macho Van just an absolute incredible specimen of a rider 
great ambassador for the sport and just loves to race his bike and yeah it, we are in the match of all van Poel era everyone else 43 kilometers done here of the pave sector we still have 12 kilometers to go here so everything's still to play for looks like nobody is able to stop match of van der Poel here would Wout van Aert have changed the outcome of the race annihilator saying is it going to be an alperson one two three I mean, it could very well be. Uh, yeah. But uh, Niels Poller is leading the charge here. Being marked by Jasper Philipsen. Mass Pillars and trying to get up to this duo. So we're going to have a, a trio. And there's a Swedish flag on the side of the road. There are a few Swedish guys, I think. I think Tobias Lundqvist is in the race. But uh, only 360 meters left now. 360 meters left. Great to have Raymond as well from Philippines. Are you watching from Manila? Uh, Santiago coming with the Lance Armstrong <laughs> remark. But yeah, we're so close to 40,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Get immortalized forever on this stream. Great to have Sarah as well watching from Norway. Plenty of, of uh, uh, community chat people here as well. And uh, 45.6 kilometers, one minute and 36 seconds is all that's separating, is the huge margin separating uh, Macho Van Paul and the rest of the field. Great to have Robert from Quebec as well. We're doing the roll call because we know what's happening right now on the road. Macho Van Paul has disappeared off the front of the race. Great to have Thomas as well watching from Japan. Uh, maybe you and Stuart could get a coffee. Um as you both part of the cycling day and community but yeah um great to have over a thousand people in the chat 45.2 kilometers is all that separates us from the finish line in the velodrome and uh the next sector coming up in about um is not going to be a too hard one next sector coming up we've just had a five star sector he survived that well in 2.3 kilometers we've got a 700 meter sector so uh, the sectors are counting down, so this is sector 10 that's coming up, and then 9, you get it, you get the picture. Uh, but the Cafro de Labre is a very interesting sector that we're waiting. We got a four, st a five star, four star sector coming towards the finish as well. But Macho Van Paul dancing up the side of the road or on the road here in that very aerotuck position, but f towards the chasing group, we still have got uh, i think uae are leading the charge now with niels pollitt niels pollitt leading it with mess pilsen on his wheel stefan kung and then the massive sad bag of jasper philipsen as well i mean how are you gonna get rid of jasper philipsen he finished second in in the uh, paro bay last year and it looks like uh, a bit of aggressive riding here or in terms of the pressure being put on by mess pilsen looks around you can see that Jasper Philipsen is not too bothered, but Mas Pilsen putting on the herd here, trying to do his best to get rid of uh, Jasper Philipsen. I think he's no, uh, no ease, no, well, what am I saying? No difficulty out sprinting uh, Stefan Kung or Nils Pollitt as he beat uh, Stefan Kung back in 2019 in a sprint in uh, Yorkshire when he won the World Championships. He out sprinted uh, Matteo, well, Stephen Kung was burnt out by that, so he didn't really sprint. But right now in that second group, we have got uh, another Group Arma FDJ rider here. So the tactics have changed a bit now. Uh, Pro Cycling Stats haven't updated yet, but I think we have got a second Group Arma FDJ rider in this group now. They are 1 minute and 39 seconds here. There's one of the Van Dijk twins is in no man's land right now. He's not in that second group on the road, but he might just be swept up by this second group being led by Jordi Mayus. But it is Lawrence, Lawrence Pithy is that second rider in the, in the front, in the second group on the road, trying to help Stefan Kung here. The young 21 New Zealand rider. What a ride by him. I think it's, yeah, it's his first ever Rube. It's his first ever World Tour season. And here he is in the last 40 five kilometers uh doing his best to keep his leader in contention for a podium spot but macho van der Poel is just sailing over this 700 meter sector here getting applause the atmosphere is very different than what he was receiving in the tour of flanders 
and absolutely incredible here by Macho Van Der Poel. What a uh, incredible riding by him. And uh, yeah, the man, the myth, the legend. What more can we say that hasn't already been said by this man? It's it's astonishing how good he is on a bike. Astonishing the terrain he's conquered, the cyclocross, the yeah mountain bike he's been up there. Milan San Remo, Tour of Flanders. You say it, he's done it almost. World Championships in Glasgow last year. And the man, the myth, the legend, there's nothing more you can add on to this than we can't already say. But great to have so many Americans as well. Um, and uh, yeah, let us know where you're watching from. And yeah, as everyone said as well, uh, Santiago says he's watching from North Korea. I highly doubt that. Uh, 41.6 kilometers and the next sector is going to be a more easy one the top 10 is going to be a very interesting situation what's that going to look like as well uh we we have a number of top 10s thrown up now and again as well so uh strange ones shall i say mess pillars managed to get inside top four last year uh dominique saying is mess pillars the only one trying to respond i think Krupama trying to respond as well. Mass Pilsen just taking a bit of a breather with Jasper Philipsen, I think, on his wheel. But uh, Uno uh, UAE trying as well with Niels Pollitt. But right now, it's the young Lawrence Pithy who's trying to bring back Macho Van Der Poel. So a young neo-pro from the other side of the world, from New Zealand, is the man trying to bring back the legend Macho Van Der Poel, the living legend. In the second group on the road, we've got Visma Lisa bike trying to orchestrate some kind of chase. We've got John Degenkov in there as well. Tom Pickock, Fedorov, uh, Rasmus Tila, the Norwegian. So the top 10 could be quite an interesting one to say the least. And uh, yeah. Wait, is this true? Has Lawrence Piffy signed with Bora? Is this true? That can't be true already. Um... Oh, shoot, you're right. Oh, my goodness, that's incredible. Oh, yeah, we do uh, uh, transfer talks as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make a note of that. But, yeah, wow. Lawrence Pithy to Bora. Thank you for that, Scott McMillan. And uh, I'll make a note of that. That's, uh, he has, of course, been part of the, the, um, the setup for a while now. And I think Las Cano was also a rumor. So plenty of uh, already transfer rumors happening in the world of cycling. 21 year old, him going to Bora, would that be a good situation? We got, uh, we still have Macho Van Der in front looking to capitalize on the bit of a lull that was happening. And uh, yeah, can anyone do anything about this? That is the big question. I'm not even sure they can. One minute and 46 seconds now. And no Wout Bernard, he's just an absolute specimen on a bike here. Nobody can do anything to rival this man on the road. And yeah, what more can we say that hasn't already been said that he's done? It's a, an extraordinary ride by Macho Van He comes on to the next sector, freestyle sector, 1.4 kilometers long. And another set of cobbles that he's looking like that he's going to get rid of. Uh, with some ease. The panache on this man is second to none, I would say. Many people might say Tarbagacha, but I disagree. Great for Robert as well, uh, subscribing. Many of you subscribing to the channel. Welcome, welcome. We're nearing the 40,000 mark. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and we get one step closer. One step closer to 40,000. And uh, if you haven't already as well, check out the new channel, The Cycling Day in Action, where I did the the segment of Paru Bay, which was quite... Oh, no, the drone shots are back. They always make me nervous, these drone shots, because you never know if the drone just gets a wind shot and then goes uh, into one of the riders. Great to have Eric Brown as well, uh, part of uh, the Cycling Day in family as well. Uh, what I was saying, Arizona as well. Great, to, yeah, Bruce, um, and so many of you here as well. Thirty-eight point three kilometers still to go. 
And yeah, great to have you all here. If all of you subscribed right now, we would be at 40,000 in a second. I mean, that's probably not true because a lot of you have already subscribed. So that was a lie. Um, but yeah, Macho Vanderpool, we're seeing the invincibility, the aura of this man just unfold. He crashed at the World Championships last year on the wet on a wet descent and that wasn't enough to take at him out but yeah this this man is just a class of his own and yeah if you want to see me riding in the Arenberg forest I've said it apologies for plugging this but I really want to get this channel big um the Arenberg forest video is in the chat now so it's in the chat now so if you haven't already check that out and subscribe to that channel. Let's try and get that to a thousand. So if all thousand of you now went to that channel right now and subscribe while listening to this, then it would be fine. But in terms of the race, back to the race, 37.6 kilometers, one minute and 52 seconds is what being built up. And yeah, this might be quite interesting. This is going to be the longest solo for 30 years if he if he pulls this off match of Um yeah if you do, if follow the cycling Dane as well on Twitter if you have Twitter if you care about Twitter it's uh it's an interesting human endeavor or whatever we call it but in the chasing group Niels Pollard is the one pulling them now and uh, the group Ham FDJ is just sitting up there uh Philipson just having time to giving a thumbs up to the drone as well so uh, Mas Pilsen riding fourth wheel behind the two Group Arm FDJ riders, but Philipson just having a armchair ride. Nobody really looking as comfortable as Philipson right now on the wheel of uh, Mas Pilsen. So yeah, incredible stuff to say the least. And um, yeah, you you love to see this. This is this is incredible stuff by Alexander Koenig. Uh, absolutely clinical execution of race strategies going on and who knows if they if we can get uh yeah if we can get uh one two three like we were saying in the comments earlier but Alperson this this team that for many years were was talked as just the match of Underpool show it's absolutely not that anymore it's a comfortable it a comfortable it's a a well-oiled machine, a well-oiled monument winning machine now. And them having, oh, Pickock just having a bit of bother there. Pickock just had a bit of a bother there. So losing a bit of ground. So, but I have to say, Pickock doing a splendid ride nonetheless, um, it being his debut. I mean, think about this. Your first ever debut of the pyro bay i mean Lawrence pithy is in the same situation and he's doing an absolutely monstrous ride here to be up there so well we'll went, wait and see uh yeah and uh what's gonna happen is uh gonna be very interesting to see what happens in in this race and uh yeah it's a fascinating dynamic with that second group what would you do? Yeah, guys, that's open to the chat. I mean, everything's open to the chat in terms of discussion point. But in terms of a good discussion point here is you are Mass Pilsen. You are Stefan Kung. What do you do to get rid of a Jasper Philipson? Can you get rid of him? Is that even a thing? Um, yeah. Is it? Is it too much to get rid of him? Who knows? But yeah, great to have so many people in the chat. We're nearing, we're very close to 40,000 subscribers. So uh, thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed so far. And uh, we're just seeing uh, Matisse Mikkel struggling here a bit in that second group, uh, third group, we have to call it now. But uh, we still have Jasper Philipsen, Mas Pilsen, uh, Stefan Kung, Lawrence Pithy, and Niels Pollo in that second group that is around two minutes adrift to Macho Van der Poel. So, uh, yeah, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, yeah, is this going to be another accolade to add to his accolades of accolades that doesn't make sense but i thought it would make sense uh but yeah great to have so many people in the chat and 34.6 kilometers to go reminder that we're gonna have the preview show of amstel gold coming up next week in in um 
yeah, in uh, the Cycling Dane Extra and on the Cycling Dane podcast available on the Spotify. But it looks like our second group on the road might get some company now because uh, it looks like the chase is being brought back by Jordi Muyus and uh, and Fedorov, of all people. Who would have thought that, that they would be the ones bringing back the likes of Bas Pilters and, and Stefan Kuhn? So... Yeah, Tim Van Dijke is just a slightly adrift of this uh, this move and um, in terms of that second move. But yeah, uh, we might have a big second group now. One minute and 58 seconds behind Macho Van Der Poel still. So they've, they've pulled back two seconds. Hurrah. Uh, I don't think that's going to be world, uh, well, race ending for Macho Van Der Poel's aspirations. The man is absolutely a machine at the front of the race. And what can he do? Oh, yeah, guys, what do we say? How are you? How are you stopping Jasper Philipsen? Um, yeah, uh, Hernan saying apologies for not subscribing months ago. Here in Los Angeles, great to have you here as well. Pickock to win. I'm still all flesh. Uh, that could definitely be on the cards if this hasn't taken too much out of him. And uh, Pogacar doing the double in terms of doing. Yeah, maybe maybe that's more on the cards here. But 33.4 kilometers still to go now. And 1 minute and 58 seconds. This is getting enticing now for the rest of the podium spots. Uh, you have to say, are we going to see potentially a win by, who knows, uh, uh, a second place from Jasper Philipsen. But we're on the next sector, 500 meter sector, two stars. Macho Van Der just taking in the plaudits. Applause everywhere. No booze this time around, which is good to see. And uh, yeah, what an absolute machine he is on a bike now. And what more can he do on a bike that he hasn't already? He's down for Liege, Baston Liege, which excites me extremely. Because then he could potentially win his fourth monument out of the five missing Il Lombardia. But I don't think that is happening anytime soon. Who knows? Never discount a uh, uh, Macho Van Der of course. And as a hu huge Macho Van Der fan myself, I, uh, I certainly want to see it. But Van Der Poel just pushing out of every corner. Doing his best to just keeping the pace high. Two minutes and one second just eking it out. But in terms of next sector, I hear you say in the comments, um, the next sector is in um, in about six kilometers time. It's a three star sector, 1.3 kilometers long. And I think that's right. If it isn't it, this next one. But much of Annapol going quite slowly around the corners, uh, taking it easy. Obviously, he almost came down last year but just saved it narrowly towards uh, his other solo there but yeah Macho Van Der Poel just absolutely incredible Mess Pilsen coming to the front here he's kind of in a lose-lose situation would it be different if he had the likes of Alex Kirsch and Jasper Stoven with him I think yes um, yeah it's uh, yeah incredible stuff uh, for Macho Van Der Poel, but Mas Pilsen doing his best here. He wants, if Mas Pilsen gets a podium, I think he would be quite happy with that, given the circumstances, given that crash. And uh, yeah, um, incredible to say the least, um, if he could do something like that for Mas Pilsen. Another, another top result in a monument. He's finished on the podium in Tour of Flanders a few times. He's finished on the podium. No, he hasn't finished on the podium in Milan San Remo. So very close, but not quite. Um, but Mas Pilsen is the one leading the charge now in that group. And um, yeah, it's it's great stuff by him, uh, to say the least. Um, Mas Pilsen trying to... He's been dealt a bad card here. Could he have followed the move by, by Macho that, yeah, maybe... I, I think uh, could he, he might have felt that he could have burnt himself on. He was maybe caught in the wrong wheel at the wrong time. Uh, but we'll dissect that in the recap race analysis on the Cycling Dane podcast or on the Cycling Dane Extra channel if you haven't checked that out already. But um, yeah, first defense 
uh, of Pyro Bay, uh, of Pyro Bay, since since uh, 2013. First, first, <laughs> well, first, first world champion since 2009. No, 19 was Gilbert. 18 was it? 18. Um, am I getting my numbers mixed up here? Um, Roubaix 2018 was that Peter Sagan? It was Peter Sagan 2018, and then the first double as a world champion since uh 1962 first world champion to win pyro bay oh crash 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 that was lawrence pithy lawrence pithy crash 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 that is not good not good not good not good not good here oh that was a hard crash there by pithy that was not good lawrence pithy just hard corner did he just lose yeah lost the front wheel that was very bad luck there by uh Lawrence Pithy there what a sad, what a sad way for him to maybe end his Paro Bay he, he could have been on there for a, a top five result as well and um yeah in yeah what a shame what a shame he's still he's up on the bike so kudos to him it's still riding on a top 10 could be on the cards here um yeah first uh, world champion um first world champion champion to complete flanders roubaix double since 1962 bonus point for anyone who can name me that uh roubaix double since 1962 and uh yeah uh, Lawrence Piffy, that sorry, apologies for that. I was trying to write that on Twitter, so we had that ready. Now we're back, full concentration, and uh, yeah, this is absolutely remarkable. The second situation on the road, we got two minutes and five seconds, uh, two minutes and thirty six seconds for the third group. So they didn't, they just weren't able to catch them there. Uh, but uh, yeah, great to have one thousand two hundred people watching, even Fabio watching from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Great to have you here. Um, Piffy was the only one who fell. So, uh, yeah, that was it. Piffy was the only one who fell. So we'll wait and see what happens with Piffy. But 28.5 kilometers still to go. Number five, Jasper Philipson. Unfortunate for these guys is in the group. And, yeah, I don't need... Yeah, one of you said... Uh, who was it? Uh, Jean-Marc said second place is second place is first loser. Um, I mean, I don't even think second place is in contention right now with uh, Jasper Philipsen being in that second group. This might be the the second 1-2 double for Alperson in terms of Paro Bay here. So, yeah, but absolutely incredible riding here by Macho Van Apel. Just eking out the advantage just a few more seconds, two minutes and six seconds. 40 seconds now between the second group with Jasper Philipsen, Mess Pilsen, Stefan Kuhn and everyone. And then this third chase group on the road. So everything to play for in terms of the top 10 positions. But it looks like the first place is out of the question, I think. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not seeing anyone doing this, uh, to be honest. But uh, yeah, so unlucky there. So unlucky uh, by uh, by the young Piffy, 21 years old, your first Roubaix, and you're up there helping your team leader. You're in a top five position, so close to the velodrome as well. And then just in the last few moments, that, well, not the last few moments, but just uh, the, the wrong kind of turn. But yeah, big shame there. Big, big shame. Uh, for last defense we had of our uh, Roubaix title was all the way back in 2009. So that's how far you have to go back. 2009. Um, with Tom Boonen. That is quite incredible. Uh, yeah. Record breaker. Record breaker. Record breaker. 
And uh, yeah, that is quite in- incredible to say the least of Macho Banapol here. Um, yeah, first world champion to win since since 2018. F- and uh, first double, first, uh, yeah, it's just remarkable this man, what he can do on a bike. Uh, I hope he can win. Um, yeah, I really hope he can win Liege, Bastion Liege. World champion. This is what you want to see a world champion be. You want to see a world champion be at the front. You want to see them really challenge for the situation, like really put everything on the line. The panache on, on here is is incredible. Oh, uh, my stream is slower. Uh, apologies for that, guys. Oh, this stream. Okay, maybe not this stream. Okay. But great to have so many people here in the chat. 26 kilometers still to go. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button to try and get us to 40,000 today. If we can't already, we'll try and get it on the next one. And uh, check out the Cycling Dane Extra channel if you haven't already. And check out the video where I did uh, the Paro Bay video on the Echelon. No, the Cycling Dane Action channel. It's a bit hard to keep up. But we have a bit of a lull now. Manipal is on the next sector uh, of the race. 400 meters is all that he's got left on that sector. Third man, third group on the road is being led by Pickcock. They're doing great rotations here. Tila is in there. Plenty of Visma Lisa bike riders in there. Uh, Fedorov is in here. When is the last time we had... Uh, I need to check if Fedorov's been in the top 10 before or in the top 20. Because uh, Fedorov is doing... Fedorov. Uh, is doing an absolutely sublime ride here, the Kazakh rider. He has done Roubaix. He did, he was 26th last year, so it's not too much of a surprise that he's up here. Um, so he's doing a great ride, to say the least. But at the front, still much of Anapol, wearing number one, a number he's probably going to be wearing next year as well. And is he going to be uh, incredible? I think this is going to be the first time we ever had a 1-2 as well. Uh yeah, but uh, we'll wait and see. Macho Vanapol, the legend, the man, the myth, the legend. What more can he do that he hasn't already done on a bike? In terms of his, his, um, his stature, about 25 kilometers is all that separates between him and another cobblestone, another big cobblestone, if you can get it. We wait and see. It's going to be interesting stuff, to say the least. Uh, he's such a breath of fresh air. Uh, the panache he's shown. It, yeah, it just uh, absolutely remarkable stuff here by Machu. He's doing everything he can in his powers to stay away. Two minutes and 12 seconds now, the gap. Uh, Mas Pilsen trying to drive this second group now. They are in sector seven. It's 1.3 kilometers long, three-star sector. Mas Pilsen really driving this chase. And it is that doomed roll with Jasper Philipsen just following every move, looking fairly comfortable. And in another, well, in another race, in another edition, it would be Jasper Philipsen winning this race, but it looks like it's Macho Van Der Poel. Uh, Macho Van Der Poel did, did him a service in Milan San Remo and Jasper Philipsen just giving one back here. So... Yeah, it's incredible to see uh, what's happening, uh, the teamwork from this team. They win together and yeah, this is great riding by all these riders and uh, we'll wait and see what happens in terms of that third or the second and third place. Um, will it be a win for, will it be a 1-2 again? Are we going to see any of these riders do anything? Uh, you would love to see them just nudge it a bit, just do something. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll wait to see if if they can do anything here in terms of the race. It's it's all still to play for here, all still to play for in potentially the lower top tens, uh, and the podium. But I think the win is disappearing up the road. Two minutes and eighteen seconds now. It's it's. I think this is too much of a uh, too tall up. Um, of an ask now but Laura, uh, Lawrence Pithy as well Lawrence Pithy is still in hot pursuit here the race seems to be over but uh, don't go away I mean this would be a good opportunity to check out the Arenberg video 
Um, but Macho Vanderpool, what a class act. 200 meters of this sector left. And uh, yeah, nobody really challenging Macho Vanderpool in today's race, you would say. What is he going to do? Is he going to sit up? Is he going to keep racing? Uh, the Dutch fans say he's just a racing machine. He loves racing. I mean, today it's going to be Max Verstappen and and uh, Match Van Der Poel Day. Uh, these two doing the double again. How many uh, uh, doubles have we had of Match Van Der Poel and Max Verstappen? That is the big question. This is my. It looks like it's going to be his 49th victory. His next race is set to be Amsterdam Gold next week. So. The momentum continues, and then the week after, he's going to be at Liège, Baston Liège. So the party doesn't let up. Uh, so we could well and truly see Mathieu be up there for yet another monument victory. Obviously, Tadragacha is there to deal with as well. No Remco Venepol, unfortunately, after the crash in the Basque country. But 22.6 kilometers is all that separates him. It's 2 minutes and 22 seconds. They're on sector 3 now, the second group. 1.1 kilometers long. Uh, not too much of a bother. I think Macho Van has actually exited this gap. Johnny Vermesh is doing a triple attack here from the third group now. So we're going to see another uh, Alpazen rider just being able to ride for themselves here. He's been solid, Johnny Vermesh, this season already. Um, I'm not quite sure what his best result is. Many obviously think about that 2022-2021 Mori edition, but that wasn't Vermesh. That was Florian Vermesh, not Gianni Vermesh. Um, but yeah, great ride here by Gianni Vermesh here. His best result to date was 11th place last year. Um, obviously 23rd in the Ronde van Vlaanderen, but he was on marking duties. Group 2 dynamics happening here a bit in that second group on the road. And um, Naspil is desperately trying to take up the chase here. He's caught in a bit of a bad situation. He he would have loved to have had a Stoven in here in this group. That would have been the best scenario here. But a, a tactical masterclass here by none other than Alperson. Doing their best to just keep everyone in, in a checkmate situation. And they have a firm control of what this looks like. The race... Um, yeah, this is, yeah, this is absolutely remarkable stuff happening in front of our very eyes. And, uh, what more is going to happen? That is the big question. Um, yeah, Lawrence Piffy in no man's land, unfortunately, he might just be swept up by the Vimesh group as well, but he's doing a solid ride, this Neo Pro rider. Hats off to Pithy. Absolutely incredible performance by the Kiwi rider. 21.2 kilometers to go here. Sectors coming up. Plenty of them coming. And let's just rattle them off so we know exactly what's coming up uh, in terms of our challenge for Macho Van I mean, his biggest challenge is... Oh, my goodness. There's three minutes between him and Vermesh. The biggest challenge for him is, is himself uh, or the parkour or puncture. We got one kilometer until the next sector, 1.8 kilometers long, uh, four sector, and then it's a five sector, the Carlo, uh, Carlo de Labre. So these, this is a very tough combination, a tough 5K uh, of the race here. So yeah, this is probably where we could see them try and challenge uh, Jasper Philipsen to get rid of him in that second group. It's probably where they need to put the pressure if they're gonna get rid of him you can't get carry this man to the line. Guys, think it through. This man is dangerous. He's the best sprinter in the world. Or is he? He lost the Skelter Priest to Tim Miller. But uh, yeah, the green jersey winner of the Tour de France. Is he going to leap away now? Uh, and not now, but like... Or is he even going to attack? Is he just going to... He's been resting up for the, a lot of kilometers now. Is he just going to hammer it in? Uh, but Macho Manipal coming to this five-star sector now, ramping it at four-star sector, apologies. 1.8 kilometers now and just keeping calm. Nothing really, nothing really to do here. And uh, yeah, this is interesting. Absolutely interesting. Um, um, But uh, yeah, he's solid, absolutely instrumental. 
he he carves past this like it's carpet or or smooth road it looks effortlessly in a cycling dynasty obviously Adri van der Poel uh Raymond Poulador his grandfather his brother David van der Poel obviously not as great uh but yeah Macho van der Poel just absolutely extraordinary rider second monument of the season it looks like it's going to be on the cards here and uh what more can we say that hasn't already been said he has not had that many race days as well so he's really uh, maximized his opportunities but Gianni Vermeer is coming up to Lawrence Pithy here so maybe they two could form uh, a bit of a duo here and work together to get the the places I think uh, he just said come with me and uh yeah, that would be quite nice. It would benefit both of these riders. And maybe we're looking at two riders that are just going to finish inside the lower top 10s. Uh, does a 7th or an 8th place really make that much difference? Uh, I think a 7th or an 8th place is great. There's not much too much distinction between the two of them. But these two are trying to get up the road now. Macho Van Apol, we're just seeing him again. Pumping his legs across this. They must be filled with with the pain but uh yeah macho just pushing on doing his best what more can he do that he hasn't already done in this race attacking really showing who was boss in the true in Arenberg, and then attacking away about 60 kilometers from the finish what a monster he is and yeah what an absolutely incredible rider and we've said it so many times and uh, i will keep saying it because i'm a macho underpool fan and as so many of you are as well um yeah a, a, a strange speed camera on the side of the roads as well one of the fans dressed up as a speed camera that's pretty funny but yeah great to have 1200 people here in the chat if you haven't already make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the chat as well see your name flash up in this in the stream forever and uh, let me know how you would beat jasper Philipson if you were one of these men in that chasing group and if you haven't already check out the new channel the cycling dane action channel where i tried the tour in arenberg but the chasing group they are on this four star sector and uh yeah are they going to be able to do anything about it that is the big question um maybe maybe not it's uh it's hard it's in yeah it's just incredible to say the least but uh it would be nice to see lawrence piffy uh lawrence piffy finish in top 10 uh yeah um to say the least but yeah uh, this is interesting stuff we're coming up to the uh cafe de labra now so that's the next next sector on the chopping block now uh, are we gonna see much of Annapol just stroll past this as well just an absolute masterclass from the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend. This is absolutely remarkable stuff happening in front of our very eyes. The records that, the achievements being smashed here, I can't, yeah. Uh, should I list it out again? The first rider to win the Tour, the Tour Power Bay double since um, 2013. The first rider to win uh, um back-to-back -back power bay since 2009 the first rider to win the as world champion since um peter sagan the first rider to win from 60 kilometers out the first rider to win uh, tour of flanders power bay double as a world champion since 1962 so yeah it's just remarkable stuff that he's just absolutely destroying records and etching his name onto more parts of history of cycling so yeah we're almost at 400 likes as well so if you haven't already make sure to hit the like button and uh, we're getting ever closer to 40,000 subscribers so uh thank you to every single one of you who have hit the like button as well so uh yeah uh jean Marc saying as well uh in terms of prize money it's 1500 for seventh and 1300 for eighth place okay so there is a difference 200 euros uh for for that but 1.5 kilometers left of Carlo de labra for match of he sees the dutch national uh, the dutch flag as well so yeah match of this is extraordinary stuff 
absolutely extraordinary stuff uh, to say the least pushing on these scenes are going to be written into the history books the number one in the rainbow jersey the world champion absolutely crazy stuff and uh yeah this is absolutely remarkable what we're seeing in front of our very eyes and i can't say anything more but this 51.9 kilometers have been covered by match of Annapol now in terms of the pave sectors so we still have three kilometers of sectors left and um yeah we'll wait and see if he can do something here uh patrick d saying as well ale omi opi could stop jasper philipson that is very true um but yeah 15.9 kilometers to go that is it for this year's paro bay the best race i think of the year maybe not uh well in terms of the suspense the the theater the challenge um but yeah maybe this year many of you won't have thought that this was one of the legendary editions let me know which one has been your favorite edition as well um yeah what are we saying as well uh van der Poel to join history as third rider to win Rund no actually 13 riders 13 rider there's a lot more riders who have run uh tour of Flanders and paro bay uh 13 times it's happened uh, 12 times and this would be the 13th time but much of Paul just soaring across the cobbles like they're nothing the chasing group we haven't spoken about them in a long time two minutes and 59 seconds down they have ventured onto this uh, sector now. Two minutes and 55 seconds down. Three minutes and 14 seconds. And three minutes and 15 seconds for that uh, unusual duo of Vermeersh and Pithy. But Macho Van is soaring past the fans here. And this is all that's going to happen here. This is incredible stuff that we're seeing in front of our very eyes with Macho Van Creating more history to add to his esteemed collection of wins. His 49th win this will be if he pulls it off. Is he going to win in Amstel Gold as well? Is he going to win in Liege, Bastogne Liege? I hope so. But it's all still to play for in terms of those lower positions. Or is it not? Has has Jasper Philipsen potentially wrapped this up in terms of that second place? Uh, Mass Pilsen up there as well. They need to try and get rid of uh, Jasper Philipsen if they can. And uh, yeah, I don't see anyone beating Jasper Philipsen if I'm honest. He is a vicious beast when it comes to sprinting. A very nice guy off the bike. And uh, yeah, any guesstimates of Macho Van der Poel's uh, watts? Apparently his uh, functional threshold output was 460 watts a few years ago. So I guess that's only higher now, maybe even. Um, yeah, he is the best of our times. He's an incredible rider, phenomenal things he does on the bike we can yeah it's absolutely astounding what he's done on a bike so far in his young career uh and uh yeah world well is this the first cyclocross world champion to win as well i think maybe it might be um yeah first cyclocross uh first cyclocross uh yeah it's incredible stuff here to say the least. Macho, we salute you, but it looks like, uh, yeah, Pithy just getting a bit of help here. The wind is very ferocious, but judging by the flags as well. And yeah, Pithy, great comeback by him. Great ride to get back into contention here. And yeah, what more can we say that we haven't already said about this a Kiwi youngster? Uh, yeah, he's a debutant of the race. He's a debutant on the world tour. But in that second group, Nils Pollard has been looking very quiet. So potentially he could get in the mix for another podium to add to his 2019 podium. Um, yeah, we'll wait and see. This is going to be a close encounter for that podium. But I don't understand Mass. I don't understand Nils Pollard. I don't understand Stefan Kung. You've got Jasper Philipsen in the group. And you're not doing anything. This is not the way you get second or third place. Um, but yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see if they can do anything about it. Uh, but at the back, Niels Pollard, 
Great ride. He's really been good this season. Great addition to the UAE team, Emirates team. And thank you, Niels Pollock. You were in the top five favorites on the Cycling Day and Extra channel video. So kudos to that, giving me some legitimacy of the picks. I mean, I picked my Chavana Paul, Mas Pilsen and Philipsen as well. But I think most of us would have picked that. It was kind of the lower top uh, five positions. And I put in Christophe Laporte, but he's kind of had bad luck. Visma Lee Spike not having a great addition, but maybe the Van Dijk twins, they can get something out of this. Uh, Vermeesh here, just doing his best to lead Piffy here. And uh, Vermeesh, obviously he would want a top 10 result as well. Never been in top 10, he was 11th last year. But the pressure being put on here by Philipson. Is this by Philipson? Is this Philipson pushing on now? Yeah, Philipson, best best form of uh, defense is attack. And this is great riding by Philipson. And this is maybe the others just don't have anything in the legs here. 12 kilometers still to go here for Macho Manipal out in front. And behind Jasper Philipson is the man trying to chase him down. Uh, two minutes and 58 seconds between Philipson and Macho Manipal. So a huge margin to say the least. But yeah, Macho, wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah, this is extraordinary riding by, by the Dutchman. And yeah, what more can we say that hasn't already been done? I said it before. But Jasper Philipsen as well. It's not just the Macho van der Poel show. It's also the Jasper Philipsen show here. 11.3 kilometers to go here. Mas Pilsen and Niels Pollitt. Niels Pollitt not wanting to close the gap here. Mas Pilsen, he's forcing him to do it. And I think that's quite a smart move. Considering Mas Pilsen is the better sprinter out of the two of them. But Niels Pollitt, can he get another podium to add to his Tour of Flanders podium? He would be the only rider other than Machu Van der Poel to finish on the podium of that of a cobblestone monument. Uh, so that would be a great achievement. Great achievement for UAT Emirates as well if he pulls this off. But uh, Mas Pilsen has brought back uh, Philipsen. So now, uh, yeah, Mas Pilsen is pulling, uh, pulling Philipsen, Nils Polle. And Mas Pilsen needs to watch out now because he was caught out a bit in... Uh, Milan San Remo in the sprint, and now he faces the danger of potentially being caught out again. Thank you, Sarah, for a bit of coffee money as well. And uh, yeah, apparently we can like uh, these things as well. So yeah, this is absolutely remarkable stuff to see uh, in terms of that second position. And uh, yeah, as B Bernie said as well, his remarkable cyclocross skills on show completely. But we will we wait to see what's happening in this finale. Uh, great to have eleven hundred people in the chat, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let's try and get to four hundred, no, forty thousand subscribers. We're over four hundred likes as well in the chat. Can we get to five hundred? Four hundred and thirty-four. We're only what a quick maths, sixty-eight likes away. Uh, but Macho Manipal getting congratulated by the fans is not the same scenes that we saw in in uh in flanders so um yeah uh it's uh incredible riding here by macho van what can he do in this race this is remarkable riding such a specimen yeah i'm a huge fan as we all know uh but yeah 29 years old fourth participant or uh, fourth participation of paro bay He's finished on the podium twice already and uh, won it on one of those editions and now he's going to win another one. He finished ninth in the other edition as well. But yeah, this race, he so wanted to win this. 9.2 kilometers to go, 2 minutes and 50 seconds, 52 seconds. So the, the advantage has been taken out a bit as well. And uh, yeah... Remarkable stuff here, absolutely remarkable. The rainbow bands, we want to see them at the front of the race. And Macho is absolutely carrying those stripes with the dedication, the panache that they deserve. So, wow, wow, wow. And uh, yeah, the accolades uh, of this win means a lot. And if you can just saw 8.8 .8 kilometers with an advantage of two minutes and 50 seconds to that second group, 
uh, Philipson tried to get away, but he's just staying in that group. Uh, so, yeah, uh, what are we saying is, well? <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens in terms of this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> actual human is saying this is struggling to commentate of a slow baseball game. I mean, yeah, he has just disappeared for the last 60 kilometers, but I still think the intrigue with that second position could do something. And, uh, yeah, are we going to see anything happen here? Um, this is the last sector, 1.4 kilometers. And they refer to this as the legend sector. So we'll see what he will do here. As Danke says, this looks so easy for Macho Van der Poel. He's just sailing, floating on these cobbles like they're nothing. It's absolutely remarkable to see. And uh, yeah, well, you can see it on the screen as well. That's where I saw him do it on the tour, uh, tour in Arenberg. But yeah, an absolutely astonishing feat here by Macho Van der Poel. What haven't we said already? But Jasper Philipsen and uh, Johnny Vermesh, they're trying to fight for their own chances as well. And in, I think, the fourth group as we speak, we've got Abisman Lisebaik with Jordi Meos, uh, Rasmus Tiller in there as well. Uh, Tim Wellens is looking for a good result in his first year at the race. Tom Pickock was somewhere as well, his first ever race as well. And this is... Interesting stuff, 7.4 kilometers to go, 2 minutes and 52 seconds, 670 meters left of this final sector. He's got 900 meters left of Parabe Pave, and this is all, this is absolutely remarkable, uh, to say the least, um, and we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'd love to put Macklemore on right now, but seven kilometers still to go, two minutes and 52 seconds. And what is going to happen? What is going to happen in terms of that podium spot? Are we going to see Mas Pilsen? Uh I would love to see Mas Pilsen get on the podium. Uh, oh, he almost just hit that bollard like he did last time, but Macho Manipal, legendary scenes coming up, 6.8 kilometers. Is he going to get a final photo now that, um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, they, they need to name a sector in Macho Van der Poel now for sure because he's won more sectors than Don John Degenkolb and he has a sector. He's won more Paro Bays than John Degenkolb. But in the group behind, uh, 300 meters to the last sector, uh, Niels Pollard leading them on here. What does Niels Pollard do here? What does Nils Pollard do? That is the big question. I mean, a lot of talk about Greg Lamont in the chat as well. We have a great video on the channel here as well. So uh, if you want to check that out, uh, it's somewhere on the channel. But yeah, we're almost at 40,000 subscribers as well. So if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we're almost at 500 likes as well. The, the trio is being led now by uh, Jasper Philipsen. So the man on paper who should be finishing second in this scenario and who can do anything to rival a second place for Mas, uh, Jasper Philipsen. But good recovery by Mess Pilsen, you have to say. He finished fourth last year, so just off the podium. Nils Pollitz finished second on the podium before and Jasper Philipsen finishing second last year. So all of these men have good pedigree in terms of this. Stefan Kuhn dropped. So he's the third man on the ride uh, of the road now. So he's looking down the barrel of another fifth place. And yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, I think I agree with that comment. Uh, hands feel like gloves. Uh, Match of Annapol is definitely in zone two mode right now. Remember that we're doing uh, the stream next week as well for the Amstel Gold Race. So check that out. And the preview show of that race uh, will be available on the Cycling Dane podcast, available on Spotify and also on um, on the Cycling Dane Extra channel. And I'll try and get some interviews for, or one interview for our rider in the next week. So look out for that. But 5.3 kilometers still to go here. Two minutes and 46 seconds. And uh, fist bump there for Macho Van Paul and the car. They, they know it's over. This is it. 
we can constitute that this is the win. Macho will be winning his second Pyro Bay. He will become the first world champion to win since Peter Sagan. The first world champion to win the Tour of Flanders double and Pyro Bay double since 1962. And my mom wasn't even born back then. And the first um, rider to win uh, back-to-back Pyro Bay since since uh, 2009 so a lot of accolades to show for Jasper Pilsen Mas, uh, Jasper Pilsen that's not a thing Mas Pilsen and uh, Jasper Philipsen looking around Philipsen could be Danish we actually have a young gun called Philipsen uh, coming through the ranks so Philipsen his name could be Danish but uh, he's uh, alas he's not unfortunately Denmark is missing that one great sprinter but the one great sprinter that might be coming through we have on the second Dane Action channel, I sprinted against him. Shameless plug, but please go watch it. It needs more likes and views. Um, but yeah, Macho Van der Poel, 4.3 kilometers from glory. More history, more wins. His 49th win of his illustrious career already. And this is going to be absolutely incredible, to say the least. What can he do that hasn't even been done yet? He's ticked off so many achievements of this race already. And uh, in a rainbow jersey, that is a feat that many riders don't experience. Peter Sagan has. Who else has? Can you name a world champion winner? Did Bernard Hinault win as world champion? He has won Paro Bay, but uh, yeah, 3.9 kilometers still to go here. 2 minutes and 47 seconds still for him to play with. And it looks like he is going to get his own picture this time. His own picture, not with Jasper Philipsen and Wat Van Aert in the background or in the foreground, was it? Um, but yeah, this is, what more can we say? 3.6 kilometers. We're doing the recap race analysis where Patrick Blake and I, we go into more in-depth analysis of the race and give a bit of, uh, yeah, take a look at a bit of the shots as well of the race. So, so you can see the race as well. So it's not just listening to me talk about it. Uh, but 3.3 kilometers to go. He's coming ever closer to that velodrome in Roubaix. And this is a sight to behold. This is, yeah, the the famous Roubaix velodrome. And uh, what more can we say about that velodrome that hasn't already been said? Steeped in history, the champions, Boonen, Peter Sagan, uh, Johan Museo. Yeah, it's just remarkable to say the least of what has been achieved by this man and uh, the names that he finds himself uh, in. And um, we'll wait and see what he can do here. It's uh, remarkable riding by him. It might be a bit Max Verstappen-esque in terms of cycling, in terms of just see them disappear up the road and then win sublim sublimely. But we have to acknowledge the dominance, the... The performance that's happening in front of our very eyes, the panache. But in the group behind, 2 minutes and 48 seconds down the road, it is Mas Pilsen leading out this group with Jasper Philipsen. Um, yeah, they probably have around 3 kilometers to go here. Uh, he just flexed the elbow, Jasper Philipsen. I mean, what, what can you do here? What can you do? But the Cycling Dane uh, podcast on Echelon is also available. I'll share it in the chat. And uh, we'll have the recap, the the recap of the race, then the real in-depth analysis of the race as well. And that's where previews appear as well. So, uh, yeah, would appreciate you guys checking that out as well. Uh, I'll put uh, it's actually in in the link in the description or it's uh, it's in the description as well. But great to have so many people here. And uh, thank you for all the kind comments as well. We're wrapping up. We'll get the top 10 as well. We have hit over 500 people have hit the like button. So kudos, kudos to everyone. Kudos, kudos, kudos. Applause to everyone. 1.5 kilometers to go. Um, yeah, yeah. The rainbow curse, uh, jersey curse has certainly not hit much of Anupal this year. He's used to riding in the rainbows. He does it frequently. It's the final sector now, the 300 meter sector because before he comes in to Paru Bay and... Uh, Thank you, Heidi, as well. And uh, yeah, the last sector before we come into the velodrome. Before we come into the velodrome now. And now we're going to see Macho Vanapol soaking up absolutely these two laps of the velodrome. 
the man, the myth, the legend. We love him. You can't hate him unless apparently you watch the uh, Tour of Flanders, which I still think was disrespectful as anything. But he's coming into the velodrome with a cheer that people here, seeing the man, seeing the rainbow jersey, shaking his head in bis disbelief. Come on, Macho, you knew that you could win this. And uh, yeah, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. The bell rings. The last lap now for Macho. And he's gonna, yeah, what's the celebration gonna be here? Great to have so many people from around the world. Jay celebrating from the Netherlands. And the, the Dutch crowd are going to be very happy about this. This is phenomenal stuff here by the Dutch rider. The, yeah, he's going to sit up. Oh, he's not taking it easy. He comes to the finish. He looks around. It soaks in the atmosphere. He can't even see his contestants or his, his, well, his uh, rivals in the velodrome yet. And uh, he might be able to get a coffee before they even get to the velodrome. Finally, someone acknowledged my polka dot jersey. But Macho Van Paul sits up. Eternal glory is his thing. And here we have it. Macho wins another, another Paro Bay. 47.8 kilometer average here. And yeah, the man, the myth, the legend has just added another chapter to his esteemed collection of uh, absolute remarkable achievements. So yeah, Macho, wow. We salute you. This is remarkable riding. And he gets, uh, yeah, he sees his girlfriend. Wife? Girlfriend? Don't know. Uh, but yeah, Macho, incredible riding. Just hugs all around. And uh, sixth monument win for him. And wow, absolutely incredible. This is incredible stuff by Macho. And uh, yeah, we await to see what happens in the battle uh, behind the the sheer performance the things yeah the things he's just uh, ticked off the list the th the records he's reset or claimed um yeah we have to take our hats off to this absolute machine of a man um but yeah macho van der Poel, what a machine yeah, what can we say? He's absolutely extraordinary. But now we turn our attention to that second group on the road. They're not even in the velodrome yet. And yeah, wow. That just shows you how... Uh, yeah, I think this is the quickest Roubaix as well. So... Yeah. Incredible speed here by Macho. And... Uh, yeah, just wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is all you can say here. But we'll wait for the top 10 before I disappear and do the recap race analysis with Patrick Blake of Audi Cycling. We're going to do that on the Cycling Dane Extra channel. So, uh, or, or on the Cycling Dane podcast. Let's check that out as well. Great to have 1,500 people in the chat. We're getting into the velodrome now. Mess Pilsen is leading them out. Um, yeah, he's got Phillips on his wheel. Nils Pollard is not in a great position, I have to say, if he's going to do anything. Oh, this is it. Last lap. Last lap, guys. It's happening. Last lap. This is happening. Last lap. What are we going to see here? This is absolutely remarkable. Mas Pilsen. Jasper Philipsen. Nils Pollard. This is going to go down to the wire. Who's going to win this? This is going to be interesting. Pollard opens it up. That was a bit predictable. Pollard opening up. Mess Pillarsen trying to box out. Philipson box in. Philipson. Mess Pillarsen just winding up. He knows how he has Philipson on the wheel. Has he just caught out Philipson here? Just a bit of a tactical move there by Pillarsen doing his best. But yeah, 1 2. It's a 1 2. It's a 1 2. Uh, but next, coming up to the, to the line. Is going to be Stefan Kuhn. So Stefan Kuhn gets a fifth place. Great ride by Stefan Kuhn. Great ride by Stefan Kuhn. We did name him as well in the top five in the previous shows as well. He came up good here. Lawrence Pithy here. Is he going to be able to out sprint uh, Johnny Vermeer here? The two have been soul buddies for so long of this race after that crash. Uh, yeah, this is. Oh, Johnny Vermeer going to roll him. 
Lawrence Piffy, is he going to be able to do anything about it? No, I think Lawrence Piffy is just happy about it. So, it's a 1-2-6 for Alperson de Koenig and 7 for Lawrence Piffy here. And we're going to see who's going to come in of the the lower the lower ones as well. Who's going to come in here uh, of that top 10? I think John Degenkolb might get himself inside another top 10. Uh, this is absolutely remarkable stuff by all these riders to finishing the Roubaix. Um, yeah, but I think we might see a, a Visma Lisa bike rider just, uh, just going up the road here. But yeah, it's been a great race uh, to some extent. Um, many people don't like when a rider solos up the front, which we've become quite accustomed to here. But uh, yeah, it's uh, been a good one. Much of Annapur winning. Um, head over to the Cycling Dane Extra channel if you want to see the recap race analysis with Patrick and myself. And uh, why not check out the link I'm going to put in the link right now from the Cycling Dane Extra channel where I tried to go on the the pave of the Truen Orenberg. Absolutely incredible ride. Uh, something I'll never forget. And um, yeah... Uh, yeah. And so that's in the description now. Check out that, the Cycling Dane Action Channel. Maybe I'll, I'll make the Cycling Dane Action Channel make an appearance. Uh, yeah, but it's great to have so many people in company around the world. And uh, the recap race analysis, the preview show of Amstel Gold coming out next week on the Cycling Dane Extra Channel. And... So many things to come. We're going to do a, uh, a stream next week as well for Amsterdam Gold. Match of Annapol returns for that. So that's going to be a big show as well. So a lot of things to go through. And um, yeah, I think we have a lot of things to look forward to. Uh, yeah, uh, it should be a good one to say the least. So yeah, I mean... We haven't got that, that much to say. Everyone who's voted for Mass Pilsen to finish on the podium could do. Kudos, you got on the podium. And uh, yeah, incredible stuff by everyone. I think maybe nobody nobody saw the links I sent. So I'll try and see if I can see 